So James, what are you thinking about those fours? The four? What are you thinking about them? In hand. These shits? James gets everything. Every you should have known. Everything. Yeah. Look, I'm gonna be honest, I think they're cool. The the little it's hard. I don't know if you can you see it when the light hits yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I saw when I saw when it comes off what it looks like. So I mean it's not glitter, it's it, it's it's the it's the rough edges of the of the of the material, which is like a metallic base. <clears throat> to be honest with you, when I'm walking in normal like in just in the sun, you can't see it. It's only when like certain light hits it, like indoors. But even then it's only on the toe and you really can't see it. I like to shoot. If you get if I get away from the, the toe box, the rest of the display is nice. I like it a lot. I'm gonna keep them. Dave keeps sending me uh, you know Instagram messages and just keeps on making me buy new balances. Every, <laughs> every, every. He sent me the yeah, I tell him stop sending. He sends another one. <laughs> hey, I sent you one thing and you went yeah. browsing on the website <laughs> and bought two more things. That's not gonna be. I sent you yeah. to the specific shoe. That's exactly what happened. And then today you sent me, of course, those SNS pair. I know they look so good though. Like, I know the way they with the way they beat up a little bit, they look nice. I know. That that's 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 like Balance I pick things. up until I get a gray pair. I like the gray. You got to get the gray. I can't tell. I can't share with Dave all the new balance I pick up because he doesn't care until I get a gray pair. <laughs> right. That's right. You got to have a gray pair in the collection. Shit, I don't even think I have a gray pair of new balances. I'm pretty sure I don't. Talk to him whatsoever. They don't, he doesn't. He doesn't understand me. It's just, I need some color in my life. You feel me? A little Give pop me the to color, it. Baby, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you need gray. You need OG. You need it. That feel. You got to yeah. do the best of both worlds. Yeah. Got, that got, real got, Steve Jobs feel. That's what you need. Big color. Mm. Let's go. Yeah. Right? So, like, those nine, those nine, nine ones that are coming out this week. I saw the price tag on those. Isn't the price tag, yeah. like, 260 yeah. Mine will be here tomorrow. <laughs> Oh, you got them? You got them? Yeah, 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 yeah. I had to go See? for them. So East Coast. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, uh, I had <laughs> to go for them. He said, stop playing with me. I'm going to get them. <laughs> yeah. Brian, I had, to, I had to do it. I had to. There was no other way. And then, of course, after I get those, I go for the Eurovox. See? I'm going to live through y'all on those. Brown. I like them. I like them. But I like those. Um, I like the ones that are going to come later the ones that are supposed to have like the same material as the turbo green i think those are a little better to me so i wouldn't i'm not like i'm not big on the university yeah I, I, they're not anything special I, i'm i'm kind of over that one i mean i love it i grew up with it it was the first shoe i had but what did y'all just say yeah i'm what? done with the one man. i can't wait to what? dj what wait till you get old like me <laughs> I don't He's get me wrong. Wild, they, they hurt. They hurt He's when I wear them. Wild, but yeah. Jay, tell them those are must haves. Must haves. Bro, they come me. with. Hey. Now wait, wait, wait. Did they come with white laces? They should. They better. Right. Oh, oh, was the white oh, laces with a pop? Yeah, hold up. Nah, hold up. Hold up. I definitely have other pairs Brian. with white laces. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Easy. Just grab a just grab a white lace from another pair. You good to go. I'm waiting for those turbo blue. Those turbo blue ones need to drop. Yeah, turbo oh, blue. Yeah. Turbo those blues. Are those are better than me. That's the oh, only yeah. reason. Yeah. That's gonna be a problem for real. Yeah, they are. It's an addictive problem. It is. Those <laughs> silver and black ones. I don't know why I went for them, but I got two pairs, and I'm like, really? I'm never going to wear that pair. Never. I have a bunch of ones still DS that I just. Yeah. I don't want to lace. I don't want to do the work to lace them. I know it's, yeah. it's like a stupid you know? nitpick, but like, I just, I don't want to do that. X. <laughs> yeah, like, I, I, I don't even untie the shoe. You know what I'm saying? Like when it comes lace, I just slip it on. I don't, I don't have the time to, to deal with all that. Untying, um, my, my feet are too wide stuff. to do that. Dave, yeah. I just looked on the side of my, my bed, my nightstand. And those, that pair is on the side of my nightstand in a box that I totally forgot that I had oh. the, the biohacks. They just Never wear there. 
They've been sitting there, and I like them. But like Rico said, I just the the time to lace them up just doesn't seem like it's. <laughs> It's not even worth the hassle, huh? You say, mm-hmm. but, <laughs> but I'm a perfectionist. Like I like my I like my laces to be perfect. Like they all yeah. have to be. They gotta come wow. out and fold over perfectly. Like I can't I can't deal with the with the just lacing them up. They have to like they have to be pristine, pristinely laced. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's a it's a me thing. Like they gotta be spaced. The tongue has to have a certain amount of showing like i'm very See, i agree with you it. but i i'll just no matter what i've done like when i've laced shoes myself i always feel like i get it wrong because then i lace one one way and then i'm like all right so now because this is the left shoe is it is it supposed to be the other way or is it supposed to be the same way or or did i go top or did i go bottom for oh god and yeah. i end up just never wearing it i'm just like i'm not bothering with it but that's it's a lot of pressure problem. fam yeah Left uh, lace over, over, right lace first, lace left lace. That's what that's that's the move. I yeah, but like that, oh, that's for both shoes, right? Or is it for for one shoe? I and then the other we, we're going this way, the both ways. Mm. Both I'll mm-hmm. judge you over Bam. some laces. I look at yeah. laces like, mm-hmm. oh, he doesn't care about life. You know what <laughs> <laughs> for real. <laughs> for real. You know what I mean? Like ones and fours have. I don't. I can't lace. I can't tie them. So it's got to, yeah, yeah, yeah. there's a certain amount of, of room between the, t- you know, but like my SBs, I don't even untie. You know what I'm saying? Like I, those are factory lace forever. Like this. See? A nice colorway too. Yeah, that's a good colorway. Yeah, that wheat color is nice. SBs are fine coffee. coffee those are my New York like, Timberland style. That's hey, Jay, when, when, you, when do you think the, uh, the SB crave is going to go away? Has it, I, I feel like it's started. Like I saw Newcastle's for six hundred, and I was like, "Man, Whoa. so check this." It was about two or three years ago. I bought the uh, the Concepts Grails, the, mm-hmm. the the you know the silver ones. I remember, the shiny, right? I got them off StockX for one hundred fifty bucks, right? Yeah. And so I, I like a dumbass. I, I wore them a couple times and sold them because they were hurting my feet. I went the other week and looked how much they're going for in a size thirteen. One thousand dollars. That's crazy. When I tell you I was so mad at myself, <laughs> yo, it's crazy. It's crazy. Crazy. I'm, I'm gonna show you something, Swaver. These 150 bucks. How much how much they going for now? Hardly a year ago. It was like June of like tw- oh, okay. So maybe two almost two years ago. June of 2019, I saw a pair listed for 850. Like that's crazy. Damn. <laughs> what no, so when nah. I was so I, I had barbs years ago and I, I really wanted to get a second pair. I wanted them and I was I was being an ass for I was negotiating with a dude for 70 bucks, right? <laughs> 70 bucks. And I was like, nah, I'll give you 50. Like, let's come on, it's 50. No one's wearing SBs. And he wouldn't do it because he needed a 70 bucks. And then like overnight, overnight and shit skyrocketed to 400 and then from there to the moon. And I'm like, <laughs> I these, so these kind of hurt my feet a little bit. I had them on eBay for 130 for probably 18 months. And then I decided, no, I'm going to keep them. Now it's a $700 shoe. It's crazy, man. Now it's I'm like not it, selling it. Now it's like Nike hit a switch and was like, you know what? Uh, let's yeah. make FBs pop again. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. But now I feel like, you know, the I feel like Clivers were really the last new SB that are really going to go for like a thousand plus dollars. Like, I, I don't think it's that's going to continue. Show. Oh, it's gorgeous. It's stunning. Yeah, it's Greg got a pair show. and he wore it to the podcast. It's unbelievable. Yeah, um, yeah. But I don't I don't think that's going to continue. The, I don't think every SB is going to end up being seven, eight hundred dollars. I'm just wondering what's the next wave? Like for a second, I thought it was going to be Blazers. Now it's looking like it's about to be Hirachis. You know what I'm saying? It's just bones. It's, Yes, I don't tell my homie all the phones are gonna come back. I guarantee phones are back. you. Phones are back. I already I, I have some out. I need to take pictures so I can be like, I was, I was ahead of the game. I was ahead of the game. I saw it coming. Phones I mean, look, are definitely gonna come back. I'm telling you. What, what's the next SB that's dropping that's gonna be crazy? I mean, aside from like the Royal Toe, imagine like the J Pack series. Oh, they, have like the, they, have the, they have that street food one it's, from New York. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like, that's yeah. coming in a couple of days. It's coming in a couple of days, right? That. The city one. Yeah. Yeah, the city. And then you have the what's the the dunks, the highs from uh 
Damn, I just saw it on sneakers the other day. The, the black, the black yeah. hat is like blue. Yeah. It's they, like the one that you sent me. Yeah, I really want those. They're they're really nice. And I don't I don't like dunks like that. Like who no. like I don't know. I'm not I'm not even about to sit here and act like I'm familiar with any of this dunk stuff. Like the carpet company, the SB Dunk Highs Carpet Company, they come out in a couple weeks. I see them on sneakers. You know what I'm saying? I, I have never owned a pair of SBs. I think I owned Dunks. I owned all the original, the 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 rep your school ones. Those I had back in '80s. But as far as anything else, I've never worn a pair of SBs. Never one. How do you feel about that, James? Like, you feel like people creeping into your territory a little bit. How do you feel about that? Kind of funny because I know that one of our topics was gatekeeping. Personally, so I got into SBs. Not necessarily because they were the greatest shoe ever. Like, dunks were dope. But I was in college, broke as a mother, right? They were cheap, and right? And them shits were so cheap. I went to the yeah. skate shop in, in, uh, in Aurora, Colorado, when I went home one day. And they had them on sale. We're talking about ostriches, um, ostrich, broncos, um, for like 25 bucks. Buy two, buy, buy two, get one free. And I, I mean, I, I went nuts. I bought everything. I had to take them to squat. Fits for days. And I mean, as I wore them more and more, I, I, I ended up loving them. And I, I, I still love SBs to the day, Dunks in general. But as far as the question goes, I don't necessarily mind it. Like you, you've seen Menace of Society, right? Yeah. I'm like, I'm like wax. You know what I'm saying? At this point, I just love watching young kids do work. I love, I love seeing it. <laughs> like I, I need a little level of respect. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't need to be the guy. Are you weren't here for it? You can't wear it. No, I was there. Be cool. Have a good time respect a little bit uh, and enjoy it yeah right? but don't try yeah I, the, the thing i do hate is obviously the resale element when i don't get a shoe and i have to pay a zillion fucking dollars for it i don't like that uh but as far as like other people getting into it come on with it we yeah. talk about it. i got stories to tell you just I'm as long as they respect it right there. right yeah be cool you know what i'm saying if somebody comes in and starts telling me travis brought travis brought sbs back i will <laughs> we can talk you know what i'm saying we can talk because for me, SBs never went away because resale never affected that market for me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like yeah, hype. Yeah. I, I was wearing SBs even when SBs weren't a thing for a while. They're from like 2014 to 2018. So I still had them. And it wasn't like SBs weren't dropping. They were still dropping and they were still coming. Um, just nobody wanted them. You know what I'm saying? So now when I see people, I'm like, let me tell you how I got these. You know what I mean? Let's right. talk about these exciting little stories, especially, or like like uh, my man Rick was just say, barfs for 150 bucks. You know what I mean? Like, it's a it's it's a time pass, but I don't think I don't necessarily think they're going anywhere. Um, but you know, now I like seeing younger cats try to tell me what's up. <laughs> being the being the older guy here, I'll tell you the stories back in those days of getting those Jordan ones for thirty five for wholesale because yeah. they were sixty four ninety nine, and you worked in a store and you got them for thirty five dollars, and you could order whatever ones you wanted. So you would just go to Nike's catalog and just pick whatever you wanted. And then you would do basement shopping. Saturdays and Sundays, you would just go to stores to all throughout New York and just go to the basement to the old Jewish guys who own the stores. And you would say, hey, listen, bro, can I go to the basement? They didn't care. They were like, why do you want to go down there for? And you were like, don't worry about it. I just want to go down there and check stuff out. And you would get stuff and you'd bring it up and they'd give it to you for $5, $10. You kept half of it. You warm, you beat them to death. But that was the way it was. It was back then. It was so different. Now I see a shoe. I remember seeing that. I was talking to Dave the other day about a New Balance that went for a hundred dollars. I remember when that first shoe went for a hundred dollars, and I was like a hundred dollars for a shoe. Now that sticker shock isn't there anymore. Well, you're paying two sixty five for that New Balance that just dropped at nine nine one, and you're not even questioning it. The resale, that's insane. I mean. I can't see guys paying $1,000 for a pair of shoes. It's just insane to me. Yeah. I will never do it. And I try, I try my hardest never to resell a shit. Never. I, and that was one of the questions that I had for, for you guys. And I think I put it on the list that I sent around was like, do you consider resale as part of the like community, part of the culture? Like for me, I'm always like, I, I understand, like I, if I buy a shoe, I buy it because I like it, because I want it, and because I'm going to wear it. I, rare, I don't even try, really, for things that I'm not going to wear or I'm not going to buy. It doesn't really matter what resale is to me. But at the same time, like, I know there are people that are into shoes, but I don't know if they're into shoes because if, if you're reselling it, 
if you're buying it to flip it, if you're buying it because it's the hot thing and then like two weeks from now you're gonna flip it, like are you a part of the community? Are you like part of the the sneaker culture? Like, I mean, yeah, I think we all get stuff that we don't we get that we like wear or we put on foot and it's like, uh, I don't know about this. Like, like Swaver, we were talking about uh what was it, five seven sevens a while ago. And like you got a pair in, and you were just like, I, I this ain't it, <laughs> right? And like I'm the right. same way. Like the five seven seven, I got it in, and I'm like, this ain't it. Like I can't, I can't. It doesn't look right for me. I don't like it. Like, and so yeah, I'm gonna sell it. I won't sell for resale. I sell everything back for retail, you know. And so like I always, I don't know if I consider resellers a part of the community. Like if you bought it to immediately put it on StockX. You're not a part of the community. You're I don't a You're part of the community. Like, what well, if you buy it and not in, not in your size? Like, I'm not like, gonna I'm sit not here and say, uh, "Yeah, I'm gonna go for a, a size 13 and everything." Now, right. the thing about it is, is that uh, how can I put it? We don't have the ability to just go into the store and try on a shoe, right? So you have no choice but to buy a sneaker, get it in, and if you like it, you keep it, and if you don't. If that's gonna, if I, if me flipping that sneaker on StockX is gonna help me get to another sneaker that I want, then I'm all game for it, right? It's yeah, just the people that just are buying it just to make a profit off of it, even if the profit's only like thirty dollars. Those are the ones that I call culture vultures, vultures for sure. You know what I'm saying? We, everybody, uh, Dave, everybody. Oh my bad. Go ahead, Bree. Go ahead. Dave, we, we we had discussed this last. I think it was last night or the night before. And I had said to you, I reached out to somebody to get those Supreme, whatever those things are, those yeah. Nike Supreme shoes. I don't even know what they are. Are they Dunks? Are they SB? I have no clue. And I was going to use them to hold on to them for something that I want that I know I'm not going to pay that amount. So if I'm going to pay $120 for a shoe and it's going to resell for $1,000, i am not going to sell it to somebody for $1,000. But if they've got a shoe that I want, well, I'm going to use that shoe as a pawn. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think uh, we Greg and I talked about it on the on the sneak disc the last time I was on, and I think it's really just uh, what's the intention behind it. You know what I mean? Like, there if I have I have something sitting in my closet that I haven't looked at, I haven't worn, I haven't that I'm just like, you know what? I'm not gonna get around to wearing this. Like you said, Swaver, it's gonna help me get to another shoe that I want. So I'm. I'm going to sell it. I Maybe I'll sell it for a little over retail. I'm not going to try to sell it for thousands of dollars or whatnot. But, you know, Greg was trying to say, oh, that makes us all resellers. It's like, no, it nah. doesn't. And Because I'm not going to store from store to store to store to get seven pairs of topazes to send to StockX to make my little $40 a pair. You know what I mean? Like, it, that's, that's a little different. And that resale culture, I mean, has kind of seeped into everything, you know, because now it's not only sneakers, it's sports cards, it's PlayStation 5s, it's, you know, it, you know, and it's even, you know, back when I people were selling iPhones, people were standing in line for hours to resell an iPhone back when <laughs> there's still a really big market for those. So it's, that's more, it's more resale culture. It's more, you know, capitalism culture, not, not sneaker culture, if there is such a thing it is a little bit of all of the above right uh so sneaker culture isn't a subculture anymore it's its own it's a whole its own community it's a whole thing whatever you want to call it but i think as rico just said uh resale culture is a subsidiary of street culture now it's a part of it whether we like it or not um that doesn't mean that you know those people there are people that are sneaker heads that also enjoy making money you know what i'm saying and they'll buy and sell and those are the people that we go against and we'll call them all these things because they take from us but they're a part of this world they show up to all the same events and do all the same things they wear all the same clothes they want to be involved in that but they also see the profit in it so they get involved and they do their thing and they they for as much as we like it or not that's part of it now you know what i'm saying it's it's part of the game these guys aren't necessarily frauds it's, they're not necessarily guys who don't get it they absolutely get it. They get it. They also understand supply and demand and basic economics. They want to be invested in this world because this world makes a lot of money. You know what I'm saying? They get their two pair for themselves and then eight pair that they'll resell and they'll make money and they'll make money and they'll make money. You know what I'm saying? They're just invested in the different ways we are. Us in this group, we care about the shoes and everything that goes along with it. We don't want to get ripped off buying the pair of shoes from the guys who are taking it from them, but they're there. 
they're not going nowhere. And, and you're absolutely right. They, they're they're invested in everything else. It's just a capitalistic element of sneaker now. You know what I'm saying? I always wonder, like, so like there's those people that are, I feel like they straddle the line, like they're trying to resell and they're also trying to be part of the culture. Like, I wonder if, like, to me, when I think about like sneaker culture, I feel like it's the thing now. Like, you know, Swaver, we talked about this, I think, and you mentioned it in your stories on IG, like, it's like the thing to be into sneakers now. It's not like, like I like sneakers since forever. You know what I mean? Like I've I've always liked sneakers. You know, I remember when the Silver Bullet 97 came out, like I remember that. Like that to me is like etched in my brain, right? And like, right. that is something that I always remember. And every time they come out, like I, I feel like a special way, like I gotta get that. Like I gotta, I gotta have another pair, right? So like, I feel like there's people that never felt that way about sneakers that are our age or that are maybe a little bit younger, like maybe Rico's age that are like, hey, this is the thing now. This is how I show that I'm cool. This is how I show that I have status. This is how I show I have a little bit of clout. I'm gonna rock these. And they also have the resale element, that capitalistic whatever. And so like, I always question like, if it wasn't cool, if Travis Scott wasn't rocking pairs, if the, I don't know, Kim and Kardashian and all the Jenners weren't into pairs, if Kanye wasn't, you know, doing, doing, doing shoes, would it be a thing? Would, would resale culture be a thing? And would sneaker culture, would those people be into sneakers? Or would they no. be into watches or t-shirts or something? <laughs> I don't, I don't well, think you know, it'd be sneakers. I definitely don't think it, they, I, I know from my personal perspective, I'm speaking of from like a, a nightlife perspective, especially here in Dallas. It's like the last year I'm seeing people I know for a fact don't know shit about shoes. All of a sudden, like, yo, man, gotta have these. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> You know, like, I like, you know, everybody gets nosy. You go in people's pages and see comments and stuff, and people are like, "Hey, man, hey, where'd you get these? Let me, let me know the plug." And you know, they're like, "Ah, you know what I'm saying? I can't let you know the plug and shit." You know, I'm just like, <laughs> "What's going on?" Same guys I, who are like, who are like the 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 gray space jams. You're like, "Oh, what?" No. Yeah, it, so you know what I'm saying? Like, it's, uh, uh, that ain't my it. My favorite are, are the rich guys on sneaker shopping that'll pick up a Concord and be like. Yeah, the black and white joints, clean. Yeah, mm. it's like, come on, man. It just, it's and they people see people with shoes on social media get attention. You know what I'm saying? And, and from a dude's perspective, I mean, let's be real. There are sneaker groupies. There's there's chicks out there that likes dudes with sneakers. So if if a regular guy sees somebody with sneakers and goes through his comments and see all these girls comment on his stuff, what do you think he's gonna do? Well, let me get on these sneakers right now. So I, I don't think people per se, the masses love sneakers. I think they like the benefits of having sneakers. What comes with it? The popularity, the, oh, damn, he looks cool. Uh, let me try to be like him. You know what I'm saying? So I, I, I personally don't think overall the love for sneaker is really genuine. No way. Impossible. Especially when I know somebody like us invest time, money, Saturday mornings, you know, going from website to website trying to buy our shoes. I know y'all are doing that same thing as us. So I, I can't say you're invested into it if you're not putting that sacrifice in. You feel me? I, yeah. it, it gets me mad. It gets me upset. You can tell I'm getting worked up right now. I just hate poses, bro. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. It goes back to, you know, that the way we just love the materials, the execution. What goes into that shoe? There's, it's it's that deeper love. We were talking about it, DJ. We went back and forth one day, and you said, you know, about the resellers, and you were saying about how you want, you know, like I'm thinking about getting out of this, and it it'll. I'm telling you, at my age, it is ingrained in us. It, it runs it through our blood. We love this more than anything. You know, like I still look at a shoe and I fall in love. I fall in love with that shoe. I don't care what somebody else is wearing. I just fall in love with that shoe. I don't care what anybody else thinks about it. It's, it's everything about it, the story behind it, the execution, the materials, the way it looks on my foot, 
the way the paint falls on it, everything, the way it just, there's so much that goes into it. The love that you have for it, and that'll never go away. These people that like SBs, these people that resell, they'll come and they'll go. You'll see it. It'll happen. They'll find the next wave. They'll find something else that they like. We will still be there on Saturday mornings. Exactly. We're getting our heart broken. Every time when it doesn't say we got them. Every Saturday. You know how it goes. <laughs> See, to now, the thing for me is just like, all right, when's it gonna happen though? Like, yeah, that part. Time <laughs> now, the bubble's gonna burst. Dunks are gonna sit. They're gonna be sixty-five dollars again. Like it, it has to happen again, right? Hey, but I think, I think, I think, I think so. Because, because the way the way I see it, you know, it's it's shoe cold this whole shoe thing it's not going to go away because uh, guys like us are being born you know what i'm saying like there are going to be guys who didn't get the clivers who talk about the clivers who really wish they could have had it you know what i'm saying and then 10 years down the line they're making money and they're going after these shoes and they fall in love with sneakers like we did you know it's not necessarily just us there, there's a new sneaker person being born every day their subculture is just different because we were we were around before social media made shoes cool you know what i'm saying we were the we were still part of the culture walking down the street and we said we saw the shoe out of the corner of our eye and you you knew what's up you know what i mean like this is that you're that man you know what i'm saying there was no hashtags there was no instagram to gas you up or to make you feel like you were you know you're a part of something different like this when we were just a, a completely different group but you know even then you know it wasn't like there was a vast array of shoes that were available to us there was still a certain number and they were still going away they were still selling um shoes were still selling out maybe in the early 80s when we when sneakers were still in their in their infancy and 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 this whole thing was starting to develop, but as we go through the years, it started to become a thing. It's just nobody knew about it. You know what I'm saying? Only the few, and we were a part of that group. And now I know there's kids that are in there, you know, that are 14, 15, 16, that see the shoes that they can't buy because they don't have the money to buy them, you know, and they hope they can get it. And eventually when they make money, they're going to go back and hunt for the shoes just like I did. You know what I'm saying? Or just like someone we, or like we did. But there is that group of people who are just here, as whoever said, because sneakers are cool. Because they want to be in the conversation. You know what I'm saying? You show up at the club and you see a bunch of dudes and they all wearing the exact same shoe that just dropped last week. You know what I mean? And, and they want to be in. They want to be in so bad. And that's cool. Come and join the club. But diversify, my boy. You know what I'm Man. saying? <laughs> diversify. You know, if it, I try not to wear the shoes that drop this year because I don't want to necessarily wear the same shoe everybody else has and I'm happy to have it. Sometimes I just can't get away from it and I will wear it. But like, there will be a, a bubble burst left behind in the group that'll come after them always. I don't think shoes are going anywhere. Zero, zero spot. Maybe we'll, we'll, we'll SBs and, 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 and dunks drop to 50 bucks again. Yeah, probably. I'm sure they will. Just like Air Max nineties and Air Max ones aren't shit right now. They'll be back though. They'll be right back. It's fashion. It's just a cycle again. It's just, who's going to be there to pick it up when it comes. Is it, is it, you think it's brand specific? You think that without like the influence of someone like Nike, that it wouldn't be as big as it is? Um, Cause I always think like, I'm always, obviously like I'm very counterculture. I always, I, I don't buy as much Nike as I, as I did in the past, or I don't even, you know, I don't, I don't pursue stuff just because I know, like I know, like sneakers is just a waste of memory space on my phone. Like I know that, right? You know what I mean? So do you think that there is just all of this popularity behind sneakers because Nike is there and because Nike is, is creating that imagery? Or do you think that there is something that people missed and now it's just coming around? I think we've shifted from less of it being a company thing and more to who's behind it. You know, it's not so much, oh, wow, Nike, what a great job you did. Now it's, wow, Ronnie, amazing work. You know, wow, Teddy, incredible work. Uh, Joe Fresh Goods, amazing. Like it's become so much more about the, and it's weird to say personalities behind it, but it's, it's really those people that, um, those specific 
street where influencers another word i dislike using you know those <laughs> yeah. street where influencers that are really you know out here informing you know where it comes from like if if that sean weatherspoon 97 one was just another nike shoe i don't know if it would have been as popular because they've done corduroy 97s before and no one really cared and those are better than the witherspoon ones but here's this guy this you know big personality guy with this giant neck beard and he's a resale guy and now everyone wants the shoe because his name is attached especially with everybody with and it's a combination of everybody, you know what I mean? Everybody wants to be able to have that pair that nobody has had. And that's that's what's drawn up. That's basically every shoe you're like, am I going to get it? Can I get it? Who's rocking it? Is this going to be – how often do you hear, I wonder if that shoe, what that shoe is going to sell for? And we all right. know what that means. <laughs> what's the resale, right? Like, what's it going to resell for? Because now we know that there's people who want to get it because resale is going to go high or want to get it because they want to beat out the reseller so they can keep the shoe. Maybe they don't even necessarily want it, but they want to say, I got it. That got them fucking tag that comes from nike is more valuable than the shoe for most people because they right. won and they're in the crew i'm in it i got that dub or you took the l you know what i'm saying and that's what it, that's what it is like sneakers are cool kids it, it's it's also part of cool kid mentality and at the same time it's its own sub series where it where we're all a bunch of contrarians because we don't i'm not wearing loafers i'm wearing fucking sbs because i'm i don't take myself that seriously but i do because if i lose i get angry you know we're just a big ass walking contradiction so I got to ask, like, you know, like, I always, I think, you know, part of the thing that keeps me engaged in sneakers is, I guess, people like you guys that are, are similarly obsessed. And so I'm always, I'm always curious, like, you know, yes, I, I care about the sneakers. And that is a big deal to me in its own right. Like, and I love to get, you know, I love that feeling of like a new box. And I don't even, and I don't have to post it. Like, I, I just love that feeling of a box coming in or like hearing the footsteps on the front door. <laughs> yeah. No one, <laughs> no one the that, UPS man no running one. up, knocking, he's yeah. gone before you get to the door. Yeah. yeah. Or that, <laughs> FedEx, that FedEx notification, hey, your, your package has been delivered, whatever. Um, I want to know, like, what, what do you guys, like, what do you guys think of, of the community like are there things that attract you to more than the sneakers i think you know like i get attracted to having conversations with 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 all of you and you know people all over all over the world now and like i tell people regularly i don't i talk to more people outside of the state than i do probably inside of my state um you know and about sneakers i think for me personally it's I like the connections, like you said, you make with other people that are passionate about sneakers like you are. Like, we've all talked before many times on Instagram, but this is actually the first time I've talked to all of y'all except James, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, but it's like, it's almost like we already know each other. So it's not that awkward, hey, how's it going? Uh, you know what I'm saying? It's just, <laughs> but it's just that connection that sneaker brings, man. It, it's wild, the connections you make just over a pair of, Hundred fifty dollars shoes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, that's something I would n never trade. That's my main attraction to sneakers. I mean, of course, you like rocking sneakers that look dope, but it's just the camaraderie you have. It's almost like a a, a fraternity. You know what I'm saying? I, I I don't think that's something I would ever trade. That's and so when I started building relationships around sneakers, I think other than the chase of getting a sneaker that you want, the connections you make with people people you don't even know. Um, that is priceless to me. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I think that's, I think a lot of times that is missing in the sneaker game. I don't think people really care about the connections. They just want to say, hey, I got my sneaker. It is what it is. They don't like those memories you have talking to a person about a sneaker, going back and forth, what, why you like a sneaker, why you don't, what type of materials a sneaker has. Uh, I think that's what's missing. You know what I'm saying? That a lot of people don't really value in today's sneaker culture, so to speak. You know what I mean? So I feel like it's almost up to people like us to keep that in the culture. We have to preach that to people because if not, that element of the sneaker game is going to be lost. It, it's, it's inevitable, especially when you got a younger generation of sneakerheads coming up that maybe aren't, they don't know about camp outs. They don't know about calling sneaker stores all day, trying to find a sneaker and do a phone order. They don't know anything about that. 
So they don't have the connection aspect of this game. So I feel like it's up to us to almost school these youngins to tell them, like, yo, it's more to this game than just getting a got him on your screen, bro. It is. You know what I mean? I hate to sound like that old dude, that old grumpy man, but sometimes it just comes out. I, I can't help it. <laughs> Wait till you hear my answer. That's the yeah, I'm I, I about to say, I know B got something to say. You know right. So for me, it's a little bit different. The, the, the community is important, yes. But for me, I don't really care. You know, there's a certain few. I keep that group real small. I don't really care about going all the way out and getting those. Because for me, I, I want to keep my circle small as far as I know who loves it and who doesn't. And that's good enough for me. And for me, it's going back and forth with Dave, going back and forth with Swipe, and, 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 and a few others. That's all I care about. I don't really care about having somebody know what I have, what I don't have. I care less what anybody thinks about anything that I have. And I'm not trying to impress anybody. And I'm not trying. I just love sneakers. That is it. At the end of the day, this is about one thing to me, the sneakers. The community is great, but I just love sneakers i love everything about them i have loved them for since i'm since 83 was the first pair of sneakers i got i got a pair of 750 p new balance james worthy express and that was the shoe that said it uh, god damn i would be born here yeah, yeah. <laughs> i was I, I was one i was nah, one, too. I was one uh, too. so for me you know i, want, I don't even think my parents had sex yet Happy. You don't see what's going on. God damn. So, so back then, that community was so small. And you used to see guys at certain places. And those, and it was always a small group. And I'm coming from New York. I'm not coming from like upstate. I'm coming from the city. I'm coming from Brooklyn. I'm coming from Manhattan, Queens, the Bronx, the boroughs. You knew everybody running the boroughs. You knew who was into it, who wasn't into it. There was no social media. So we didn't have that hype. It was all about the love. You, you spent every moment thinking about them. I spent all my high school years, that's all I thought about was sneakers, sneakers. I played ball. So for me, sneakers was huge. I mean, it went everything with the culture. It went, you got to remember, hip hop started when I grew up. So I grew up around, I'm not talking about I grew up through social media with Nas. I grew up seeing Nas. I grew up seeing, I went to school with a Tribe Called Quest with the Jungle Brothers. Those are people that I encountered every day. So that culture was, it was ingrained in me. It was all part of my life. So the sneakers just fell in place of the love of it. So I had that love and you kept it so small because you knew not everybody's going to love it. Not everybody's going to understand it. You'd always get those looks. But I'm a retired cop. You know what it was like to be wearing sneakers? Like some of the stuff as in the police department, people were like, what is this guy doing? <laughs> really? <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> what you think? He's like, yeah. I'm for real from the streets. Right. <laughs> like, this is real. This is so for me, when I see a sneaker these days, yes, does it break next? Do I look at it and I'm like, damn, those are nice. But it's not, I'm not worried about who likes what or who doesn't want or anything about. The small little group is good enough for me. I'm good with that. I'm good mm. with the, the, the couple of few that I go back and forth with that I know that loves this. That is, it's, it's, it's all about that. It's not about anything else. I don't worry about what somebody's reselling, what they're doing. I could care less about that stuff. I care about the love of the sneaker. Everything about it. Respect, respect. Yeah, everything. Absolutely. Exactly. Like I'm, uh, you know, when I talk about generations, like that's the that's what it's about because you, like, I could listen to Brian tell those stories, you know what I'm saying? But then there's kids that will listen to what I have to say, and then I think that group of youngsters right now that are kind of awkward and weird, they don't have their stories yet. Yeah, they may not talk about campouts, but I goddamn promise you, they're gonna talk about sneakers at to kids who, when sneakers is gone, they're gonna have their shit, and I'm gonna be that dude, and I'm be, so you see him like, uh, B was from the first gen, you know what I'm saying? First generation of sneakerheads. I was one. Half of us in this group weren't even born yet. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and in the next group, you know, and I'm, I'm in the next group, and then the next group, and the next group. And that's what I'm talking about. Like it's a generational thing. So when you feel, when, I, when we talk about community, I feel like the community expanded from that. You know what I'm saying? Like it's always going to be about the shoes. 
But when I walk into a, a place, like if I if I walk into a room and Dave and I have never met in person, I know that I'm going to say, the, I'm going to look at each other's shoes and be like, oh, you rocking them shits. You know what I'm saying? You, you got those on your feet. It's never going to be an awkward conversation because we've already had that. You know what I'm saying? We have that one thing in common that's going to break the ice. It's going to keep it going. And that that will grow with every other generation that's going down. Even though right now, there isn't the camp out where we sit there with, you know, and talk about, you know, damn, the, you know, you see Jordan's game last night. Now, you know, that that's moved on. You know, we, Kobe's gone. It's a new generation of kids coming in and they'll have their stories and we're going to be telling them that same shit and they're going to join it and they'll do it down the line and it'll be this whole revolving thing. And, and that's what I find exciting about it. So like, that's why, like, I don't care for gatekeeping because like, yeah. dope. I hope you get it. You know what I'm saying? If you want to resell shoes, good luck to you, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, dope. But if you want to talk kicks, I'll tell you a story. Let me yeah. tell you. And then if I can't tell you a better story, I'm going to point them over to, to sway or to be or whoever like if we get in a group and that's the thing like fortunately like i, I i've been in conversations with with uh sway and brian and, and people will walk up and join that conversation because we're talking about something that we all have in common you know what i mean and that's a passion for sneakers whether they're hype or not or they become a part of mainstream or not or social media this or social media that or whatever b used to go into basements i used to look at phone books you know what i'm saying other kids are gonna they're scrolling through sneakers at you know what i mean like it, it's the we all have our 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 generational element of it but we're all part of the same world for the same reason at least some of us you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. rico where are you from i am also from new york originally i'm from brooklyn where in brooklyn uh marine park sheepshead bay yeah, yeah sure sure i'm from uh uh king's highway okay okay uh, right. They're talking at uh, the East Coast talk, and we like, hmm? Yeah. <laughs> I, I saw, yeah, I saw, I could tell he was, he pulled up that garbage can, he had the Met symbol on there, and I'm yeah. like. Only uh, somebody from New York is repping the Mets, trust. God, thank right. God. Yeah. Is, thank God he doesn't have the Yankees. Oh, no, I can't, I, I can't. Yankees. I fucking hate the Yankees. I can't okay. do it. Hate them. Yeah, uh, my no, answer really just reflects what all of you said i mean you know even if i lost the connections even if i lost i'm still gonna love the shoe i'm still gonna want the shoe i'm still gonna want whatever new balance whatever a6 whatever nike whatever anything that comes out that's what i'm gonna go for it's what i'm gonna gravitate to uh i didn't mean to interrupt brian i'm sorry no 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 uh quick thing rico for you did you sneak a corner on no strand oh, i wish yes i was on yeah, no strand yeah. Yeah, one was on one was across street from the projects. Yep. Between like y, y and Z, and the other one was up by J. Yeah, that was, it was that one. I used to buy I used to buy a lot of Air Force Ones there. I bought a yeah. pair of uh, Pure Money Threes for my mom one year for Mother's Day. She still has them. They're decrepit. But my boy used to own that. My boy Jason used to be the owner of that. Place. Oh, is that right? Yeah, yeah. He sold it a couple of years back. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. I used to work in a store on Kings Highway, Buy Hawks, back in the days. Oh my god. <laughs> hey, do y'all think New Balance is going to keep this run going? I hope not. I don't want <laughs> people to buy New Balance again. <laughs> man, I just I just been waiting for Asics. Like, come on, Asics, what's going on, man? Just like I want that that 2015 feeling to come back so bad, mm -hmm. so bad. And it's Asics just keeps failing me. Like, I thought it would with Sean. They've got an exciting collab coming with Carnival. I don't know what That's that awesome. is, but it's a it's a Kayano 360. It looks yeah. amazing. Does it really? Yeah, it looks terrific. I'll send the, it to you. I, I think New Balance, New Balance is 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 kind of like they're they're really good. They had a really good year last year, but they also got helped out by the fact that there was, I think, in my opinion, I feel like they got helped out by the fact that there was the pandemic and they didn't have the the ability to ramp up and 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 sort of boost their production numbers to the level of demand that, you know, that they, that they sort of inspired early on in the year. Because ultimately that just left people wanting more. So, you know, right now they're really, really hot. But I think once they, once they ramp up production and more people are able to get things, I think it's gonna, I think it's gonna sort of even out. You think they're gonna, I, I, uh, so you think like, them knowing that having limited stuff has built their profile, you think they're going to start pushing out more? Yeah, I do. I, well, they, I know they, they will. They I know would be they crazy are. to do that. I, I, that I, know I, know. I know they are because there's no money in it. There's no right. money in them not being able to put out enough product to sell. 
Like there's not, there's, there's no money and them leaving money on the table. True, so if there's, true. If there's, if there's 150,000 people that want to buy a pair of shoes and they can only produce 25,000, they're leaving, you know, how much money on the table. Yes. There's going to be that, that hype, but eventually you gotta, you gotta sort of capitalize on that. Right. True. True. Because I mean, it can't so you think that like, you think with, I mean, with, it, it really feels like they're now in a place where they have all these connections with like all these streetwear brands now, like, you know, Sally Benberry and, you know, ALD and all these places that the limited product is selling, but they're going to go back to their old production numbers thinking it'll still sell. Like, I, I just feel like they're, probably making the same money hand over fist with all these collabs and stuff that they were in 2019, 2018, when they were just pushing out unbelievable GRs and whatnot. Once that MB1 comes back, a lot is going to change as well. Because once that MB1 comes back and that you're able to make those sneaker, a, a lot of that, a lot of that hype and a lot of that, that not being able to get, you know, like they did capitalize on this pandemic. But they are definitely going to churn out a lot more numbers. They're not a Nike. They don't have that whole portfolio. They don't have the backing, the money. They're going to have to put out more. But once that MB1 comes, a lot of people are going to make their own colors. And, like, you know, it's going to ramp it up. I mean, you got to think, like, stuff that was really hot two months, three months ago from them is already sitting. Like, you know, we talked about this on the new – we did a New Balance episode um last week or two weeks ago or whatever we talked about like like 327s are sitting like you could go on you could go on new balance right now you get any size you want <laughs> my bad my wife is messing with me <laughs> <laughs> you're you're an ass <laughs> my bad <laughs> but uh 327 with all sitting. due respect i'm not surprised that 327 is sitting i mean no that i don't is I, dookie I, I don't have any. I don't have any, but I, I'm not surprised either. And so are and so are the the 2002 R's, right? So there's there's colors sitting right now on a New Balance too, and those were really really hot, right? Especially once Salehi dropped his pair, you know, people couldn't get enough of them. But then the GRs are sitting. So like I'm like, I don't I don't know if I think 992s are still really hot. I think I think a lot of the made in the USA stuff is really hot but like there was a period where you couldn't get anything made in usa like you couldn't get gray anything right and they ramped up production they got a lot of those things restocked and like i got gray 992s for under retail you know like it i think it i think it just it matters for a little bit and also i will say this and i i think this is something that i wanted to talk about too that rico made me think of their influencer game is really on point. So they know just who to get a pair to, to spark something, right? Like they got like the number one TikTok star to wear a pair of Salehi, you know, 202Rs before, you know, before they released. And that was huge, you know? Um, Kendall and Kylie were, were wearing 327s, you know? So like that really made that shoe pop. But I haven't really seen anybody wearing like nine nine sevens or you know nine nine eights like that. You know, no, I think not at all. I think the only people that can they make those is, is is like concepts. Like I think they're the only ones that really know how to get those to like fly. But like I think it's I think it's about influencers, like for them, because they've really they've really been able to get like they got Jerry Lorenzo to wear stuff. Like that that's a big deal. Like, and so for me. I don't know. Like, I don't, I don't think that, I don't know if it's sustainable. I don't know if those, that like perfect storm is sustainable. Like, like Kanye West, he wore those, uh, the United Arrows, that 997 and a half and a half. And then Ronnie brought it back. Right. And so like, that was like a big deal. But like, I don't know if you can, I don't know if you can sustain that. Like, I don't not know. With, not with New Balance or any runners. That's a niche community. You know what I'm saying? Like, a. Uh... So uh, I don't think the masses will ever totally get into like New Balance. <laughs> and I, mean, I think I think they can, but like how many times? How many nine nine twos can you make, right? 
And this right. is back. To, this is back to the 2015 question of how many gel light threes can you make? <laughs> yeah, eventually you're gonna run. Eventually you're gonna run out of ideas. That's a fact. Because by the so, tail end, of, by the tail end of that 2000, uh, that 20th anniversary, some of those uh, GL threes got kind of whack. You know what I'm saying? Until Ronnie came out with the homeless joints. You know what I'm saying? But some of those, some of those were garbage. Like the Atmos birthday. Uh. Was like, what the hell is this? this you just came Wait, out with a white yeah. three. Like hey man, part. let's keep it real. Out of all those 25th anniversaries, that was the wackest one. Oh yeah, yeah that was by, definitely by the far. One. That was, <laughs> was definitely like, the wackest one. Yeah. It was like, damn, did we run out of ideas? But still, though, that two, that that 25th anniversary. Such an run, interesting shoe. Hey, but, you either love it or you hate it. You know what I'm saying? It's no in between when it comes to GL three. <laughs> Gl three nah, is my favorite I, I know, and that, all, of all time. I, I'm in such a I'm in such a middle area because I think the silhouette from the side is so dope. If that's if I think that split tongue great. in it. That but split that, tongue, right? That tongue, bro. You know what it looks <laughs> like. You know what it, it, it looks like fat, like a country. I can't you stand <laughs> that shoe. That's what it normally is. You either like the Gl three or you hate it because of that tongue. You know, it, don't have a, it. it don't have a wide foot. That tongue isn't even connected. You know nope, what I'm saying? Nope. <laughs> nope. Nope. Like I need to buy a pair and send it to like a, a customizer and like have it shaped together and then come back to me and I'm like, great shoe. But every like every every gel I three, I swear to myself, I'm gonna wear it. I'm gonna like it. It's gonna look good. And then I put it on my foot and I look down and I'm like, I have a vagina on my toes. <laughs> you know what I'm like it's, I don't. It's just, oh, it's I got so a big old good. vagina on my toes. It's on my foot. It's kind of weird. But then like the GL5, yeah. that neoprene, I hate that neo, neo like oh, I love like, it. I hate that part, man, because like I, I got it. a I got a weird looking ankle, so it just looks from above, it just looks weird. You know what I'm saying? I love it. It's it, it depends on the it depends on the gel light five, because I've had a few that are like mm, but I love the Gel Light Five. Like that is like that's my shoe. That's one of my shoes. Like that's top top three for me. Top three. If, I, if I'm being honest, that's why I got into runners, mainly because I didn't want to look like everybody else. Because everybody, you know, down here, especially down here in Texas, you either oh, rocking yeah. Jordans or the Yeezys. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, so I was like, you know what? Let me get let me start checking out runners more, just because I just wanted to look different. You know what I mean? And I just fell in love with it. I think if we've been honest, that's probably why most people got into runners at some point because it wasn't what everybody was rocking. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Are runners are runners like like I always keep thinking this that like runners are sort of they're that like n- that that niche inside the sneaker inside the sneaker game that's hard to crack, right? Because everybody like you could you could have a hit like you could have a hit silhouette, you could have a hit like collaboration. But it's hard. And I think, again, Ronnie is like the only person that's been able to like consistently put out runner collabs that are like amazing and they always sell out and everyone's always going crazy for them. But to do like a sustainable hit where every time you put out a runner shoe, I think other than Nike, like in the Air Maxes, like I feel like it's not possible to say, all right, we're gonna make this this runner like Gel Light Threes. They have a following, but they're never gonna pop like SBs ever do. Are no. are pop right now? Never, never, like never. Even in 2015, they weren't that popped, and that was like the biggest I think I've ever seen them. Right? Yeah. Is that just me? Like, do you feel? I feel like that. I feel like I feel like it's never. I feel like no one's ever gonna be like. I can't get runners. I can't get any runners because runners are the thing. Runners are the way. I think that's why, I, that's partly why I love it. Cause <laughs> at some point it's always going to be somewhat accessible. You know what I'm saying? If if you have the right connections and, or know where to look, you know? I I wanted to ask y'all this. I did before this came, um, before we got on this call, I knew that I wanted to ask y'all this. And this is regarding like Ronnie Fi, right? Do you think how can I put this? Do you think he's somebody that's, do you think he's wrong for kind of evolving his brand and kind of forgetting about his loyal following that kind of got him to where he is? No. Everyone's, everyone's got to evolve, man. Like, I, you know, I'm not going to expect, I, I, I feel the same way about everything. Like, 
I'm not going to expect Christopher Nolan to put out the same movie every time. I'm not going to expect, you know, any, I'm not going to expect to Kanye to put out the same music every time. Like he, right. he probably could have made, you know, college dropouts and late registrations for years now. And, but you know, he didn't want to do that. He wanted to go in a different direction. He wanted to make Yeezus. He wanted to make it 808s, you know? And so I, 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 I don't really care about that. Like if he wants to go, I mean, I just seen a storm Paris and uh, someone commented on it like, oh, this, this just looks way overly lavish. Like you're supposed <laughs> to be a streetwear store or so, some along those lines. And I'm just like, why? Like who says that Kith has to be a streetwear store? Like if he wants to open like a lavish shop and make it look kind of high end, like more power to him. Like, you know, it may pass some of us by but you know we have things like like the 252.1s that came out last year and um stuff like the the loyalty program and like things like that like that'll you know and monday programs like that'll still have us buying kith but maybe not in the way that we did once so it's kind of like a a double sided answer where if he wants to grow the brand that's great Please don't forget about us. Yeah. I, my only fear is that other boutiques start to see what he's doing and it'll be like, you know what? We got to do that shit too. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, but I feel like I feel like it takes someone like a Ronnie Feig to really pull it off. Someone like the only comparable person I would say is maybe, maybe Dion. But but Dion doesn't want to do that. He I don't even that he know doesn't Dion do could, that. man. Yeah, but he said he doesn't want to do that. He said that his thing is the, he's Dion's Dion's a sneaker guy. Dion's he says he does very little with the you know with the apparel. He does some of the apparel stuff, but he says he's a sneaker guy. He says, you know, hey, I'm here to do like cool stuff, to do like interesting stuff. I always want to like tell a cool and interesting story. Like he's all about product. He's not about. I mean, I think he is about doing like like a cool rollout for a product, but I don't know if their concepts is ever like trying to take over the world and shit like that. Yeah. They're not, they're not trying to create like, uh, I don't know. They're not creating, trying to create like a new, a new, I don't know, like a, a a new feel, a new vibe to their store. Like they're very, they're very down to earth. I, I see, I said this, I said this about Ronnie a while ago, like, I'm very happy that he continues to do like gel like threes and puts out like new balances. And for me, honestly, that's enough. Like I'm always, I'm always most impressed by the stuff he advertises the least. <laughs> like he's putting all this work into the Paris stuff and the Paris store. And like, I don't, I'm like, I don't care. Like, I, I mean, if I go to Paris one day, like I'll probably check it out, but I'm not, I'm not over the moon about it. Right. Like that's, I feel like he's not doing that for me. He's doing that for somebody else. Like a high-end clientele or something. Yeah. Like I've always said though that the thing that I find disappointing is that he doesn't he doesn't make staple products that are con- that are readily available. Like for me, like I like I like I like Ralph Lauren, right? I can always go to Ralph Lauren and get a long sleeve long sleeve sweater, black long sleeve sweater with a polo logo right here. I can always go get a polo shirt from Ralph Lauren with, you know, in my size. I can, I bought a kid shirt like 2015, 2014, all black, kid logo. It was a large. I'm a bigger guy than I, than I was then. Now I need an extra large. I can't go get that shirt. That shirt doesn't exist. But it's a basic staple, like having a basic a basic black shirt that says Kith and screen print on could it. Could always be available to get. Could always be available yeah. to me. Or it should come out at least two or three times a year, right? And then I should be able to try to buy it. But it hasn't. And so, like, to me, that's disappointing. Like, I feel like he's, big, um, he's, he's a big enough brand where he should have staples that are readily available all the time or that released multiple times a year every year so that we can you know so that he can have regular clientele that's not into i don't need montclair like dog i don't need that i don't need that like i don't i don't need versace anything 
Like I'm not, I'm not there for that. Like you, you doing that for a Monday program is not going to pull me in. Right. So like, I feel like that, that, that is, that is my only thing is like, yeah, he's always evolving. He's always doing new stuff. That's cool. Like, but where are the, sta where's the staple stuff that like I can purchase, you know, readily all the time. I see Teddy and the AOB doing the same thing. They're, they're falling in that same line as, as Ronnie. You know, and of course, they're, I mean, they're, they have that connection. I mean, so you're going to see that happen. Certain places are always going to have that. But like Dave said, you know, I just want to be able to get something that I like. Just the basics. Yeah. Yeah, I don't need anything higher end. I don't need you know, just the basic. That's all I'm looking for. I'm just looking for a basic, you know, item from you that you should be able to hold in stock. You know, but it just doesn't seem like it happens. Yeah. You know. Like most of the brands that we're talking about, or even the people that we're talking about, like we all know them for who they are, what they are. Like we know Nike is a an innovation was always their thing when it comes to sports. So we expect to see a lot from, you know, when we talk about runners, for example, right? They, yeah, they have a gazillion pairs of runners and they have one that comes every single year, in, especially in the Air Max. And I'm saying that I know that a lot of people, they think of the Air Max 1, the Air Max 90, and the Air Max 95. Those are their three pinnacles, but they've been releasing Air Maxes every year consistently for. The last 30 years, didn't it? 30 years, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That, and that, look, the, the wind the wind to fail ratio is, is quite astronomical if, we, if we're really looking at three or four, you know, if you include the 97s or whichever ever niche favor that people like. Uh, but we know that Nike's going to keep evolving and they're going to keep doing their thing. Ronnie, Ronnie's always done. You know what I'm saying? Like his brand is the same. But when it, come, when it comes to what, what I think of, of these brands, I, I, expect, I expect every brand to evolve and to grow as they get more popular. But what I want to see is I want to remember that, like, I want to, I want them to remember where they came from. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So, so give us, even, even though, you know, you maybe you can't give us college dropout every year, but you want to give us eight away. I still want to know that Kanye produced it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want to hear that sound. I want to have that feel. I want to see, like, when I see a Supreme drop, I know it's a Supreme drop. It's weird. It's obnoxious. It's annoying. But it's a supreme drop, and it always feels like a supreme drop. I know it doesn't matter how big the brand has gotten; they're going to give you a little water gun. You know what I'm saying? And that's cool. And a, and a brick. I dig that. You know what I'm saying? And a brick. And, and <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And when you, you know, and you may, you may, you know, the, the box logo is impossible to get now. But at one point, that thing, said, Brian, you can attest to this. It's that it was is. a shirt. It was always there. It was always available. Now, I mean, it's gone. You know what I'm saying? It goes. But you can still get socks every single day. You can still get boxers every day. And you can still get a Hanes tee that says Supreme on it. It's, so it's readily available. So I understand what everybody's saying. But expecting a brand not to evolve or or, or a, a designer not to evolve. And like Dion maybe doesn't want to do all the things that Ronnie does. But you know what he's doing? He's still doing everything that he's always done, which is expand on the storytelling and the ability. And they Concepts is probably the best storytelling store out oh, there. Oh, for sure. Far. You know what <laughs> not, I mean? Like, it's, I, it's not, not even a debate. <laughs> not, not even, you know what I'm saying? Like, I love it. You know what I'm saying? Like, give, I wish he did more SBs just for that fact alone because I love SB storytelling. But I digress. Uh, you know, I like seeing, I, I'm happy for brands to get bigger and evolve because, you know, I want, I wish the success. I don't want them to be a little, no little Mom boutique, shop, wants to be a boutique yeah. shop forever. They want to grow and expand and never be in trouble. And, but I want them to remember that you came from this world, stay with this world and give us a little bit every once in a while. You know what I mean? If you're going to do a Versace, a Versace drop, fine. Where's the, where, where's the Jelly 3 part of it? You know what I mean? Like I'm down. I'm cool with, you want to give me some socks? I bet I'm cool with that. <laughs> but don't forget about where you came from. Uh, don't alienate the clientele that's been a part of this for a long time. And that, that doesn't mean always give me the same shit. It's just give me a hit of it. So I remember that, you know, I, I feel like I'm involved in the same process because right. I want to grow with that brand. Grow with well. you. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Right. Because I'm, I'm, I'm brand loyal. Like I want, I want Nike to give me the Air Max uh, 2021, but don't forget to drop that Air Max one again, because I, I want that one again. You know what I mean? Like that, that's, that's, that's how I feel about it. Um, to kind of circle back, like we talked about, so I always, I always feel a certain way when I see brands or stores seed people or seed influencers that I know don't care about certain things. Um, and for me, I feel like that's a big thing that sort of hurts the community, right? Like, there's nothing that turns me off from a shoe more than seeing someone I know that doesn't, that didn't care about that shoe or didn't know about that shoe 
get seated in. And like, I don't care about people buying shoes. Like you could buy whatever you want. Like, you know, if you like a shoe and you get it, that's cool. But being seated a shoe is, is, is I feel like a, a different level. It's a different level. It's the brand sort of, I don't, and then and I, and I just, you know, I'm, this is sort of me ignorant as a, as a consumer, like I'm sure that I know that there are bigger reasons why people get seated stuff. But to me, it's it's like it shows some sort of brand appreciation. Like we appreciate you, or we know that you care about this thing that we produce. We're going to seed you this newer version or this collab version. And I'm curious how you guys feel about about seeding. I think I get I get, I get I get I get upset. I get upset. oh was he talking? Was Jay talking? Sure, I have plenty to say on this whole damn shit. Oh, go ahead, let it, let it rip, bro. <laughs> My mic was off. My bad. Go ahead. I understand marketing, and I understand these brands need to give it to people that have 150,000 watt air followers, but I can't stand it. Like, I can't even begin to tell you how much it frustrates me when I see a pair of, 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 of kicks that I know are going to be impossible for me to get, give it to somebody who does not give a flying crap about it. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're not in this world. You're not a part of it. Like, if SB would have given Kylie Jenner a pair of SBs, I would have lost my shit. You know what I'm saying because she's not from this world. Luckily, as we never did that, they don't see shoes to, to her. They don't. I don't even think they see them to Travis. Um, but they do give them to their skateboarders and people like that. So I've always appreciated that. Uh, Diamond, for example, uh, Diamond called Nikki Diamond when they, he released the the Canary. You know, he gave them to people who were a part of it from the beginning. I mean, Skate got a pair because he was in line for the OG drop. Hell yeah, he deserves that pair. Please, you know what? I'd rather see him on him. I want to see. A, 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 I want to see a person that I care about that's involved in this world because. It, like at this point, if you're if you're if you're not playing into this culture or paying to the people and you don't know who the players are in this world, then you're not fucking paying attention. And that's obnoxious. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to support you anyway. So, you know, there are there are guys out there who are big, huge uh new balance people. You know what I'm saying? I want to see that shoe on them. I want I want to see the the Brent Barry shoe on that person because that person loves this brand, wears it, has been supporting this brand from the start. But when you put it on the TikTok influencer who doesn't give two shits about it we'll never wear that shoe again because she doesn't care but she got it because she's got a million followers like that's frustrating i get it but it's frustrating it's annoying like for as much as we don't want to think of of, of some of these sneaker people as, as influencers they're influencers in our world we see people wearing them you're like okay that guy rules you know what i'm saying maybe not the rich dudes like the the uh the uh, uh <laughs> greg's favorite person the fucking perfect pair you know if you got a gazillion dollars in every shoe like I, you don't count but if you if I you're an OG like Brian who's had who's got one he's been involved in this for since 1982 and, and he has every single Jordan one ever made and he rocks it every single day and this is his world like give that man the shoe and I'll hell yeah I appreciate the brand doing that for that person but when you give it to a Jenner what the fuck does that matter to me I don't care sure it's cool for the kids and I'm they're gonna sell a million pairs to a bunch of little girls who are, who are infatuated with them. So, I mean, I understand, and this is one of those situations where I come out sounding like a fucking hater. I don't mean to, but this is the reality of it. Like, okay, give it to her. Fuck you. Give it to him instead. Yeah. Give for me the uh, 1300 ALDs. <laughs> the one that he just dropped. I mean, the, the, the green pair that he's got on and that advertisement for ALD. That was a beautiful thing. I mean, for me, is, I mean, he's every DJ's favorite DJ. I mean, that guy is the producer. Max. Him rocking those 1300s makes me look at those and go, I want that pair. But I want that pair for many reasons. But for seeing it on him, I know he's been there. I know he's given it. Some of these other, like, I don't even know who these people are. Kylie Jenner or them, I wouldn't know them if they passed me on the streets. But hey, giving them a giving I gotta them say a this, B. Sneakers, Hey, Premier is from Texas, though. Just wanted to put that on yes. the record. Yes, he was born. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Let's go. Then he, moved. <laughs> he moved to Brooklyn. Hey, <laughs> man. Hey, I correct people all the time. I mean, I know you know that, but a lot of people really think Premier's from New York. I'm like, no, 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 no. no. He's okay. from the South. You know yeah, what I'm saying? I think he lived 12, 12 years, I think he lived here in Texas. I think yeah. it was 12 years, and then he moved over to Brooklyn. I don't mind but, seating. Go ahead. Go ahead, B. Or, uh, sorry. Yeah, I, mean, I, 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 don't, don't, I, don't, I don't mind it either. I, I, I look at it, and I'm like, I see like a Kylie Jenner or whatever those girls are, the Jenner Kardashian people. And I'm like, yeah, I could care less what that girl's wearing. I understand what a brand is doing. A brand is bringing that hype because they know that they're getting those younger generation. 
But for myself, I'm looking at that and I just laugh. I'm like, I could kill us. Yes. Am I upset when I can't get the Salehi pair? Oh, yeah. I'm upset by it. Yeah. But I'm going to get my pair. That was probably the last, the Salehis were probably the last one that I really saw that every celebrity had those joints. Like, but, and the thing about it is that what pissed me off about that is that, okay, every celebrity has it. That's cool. But when the normal, regular Joe Smo wanted to get it, it was impossible to get it. And so that's the part. I don't. If you if you're gonna give see a whole bunch of people these shoes, that's cool. But you better be making enough for a lot of us regular folks to get it too. You know what I'm saying? Don't sell me a wet dream that I can't even be part of. You know what I mean? It's like <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, you know what I'm saying? So I, that's all I wish these brands seed all you want, but you better have enough for because at the end of the day, you're not making any money off those shoes. You think Kyle? You think? Uh, Jesse Williams pay for his pair? Hell no. You know what I'm saying? You're making your money off us. So if you don't make enough for us, what are you doing it for? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You're not making any money. You just took a loss, pretty much. Yeah. Just to say, just to build hype. I mean, this is a business. So that's all I, I hate. Don't don't seed all these pairs, all these celebrities, and not have enough for somebody like us to just be able to Cop a pair, you know what I'm saying? Do I and, think that's gonna change? No, but and, and for us especially, because because we're we're that entry NBA size. So you like, feel me? Hey, I had to pay resale for mine. I had to. Luckily, I got it. So like, right I. Off, I got it right when it was kind of low, right when it dropped. But now, if if I wouldn't have got that sneaker then, yeah, I, there's I no way I would have it now. You know what I'm saying? Don't even get me on size 13, stuff, bro. You already know. You already know. You already I, can, know. I wish I was six five with a nine and a half foot. I, I'd be. I'd be. I would look weird, but you know what I'm saying. I would hey. have a better chance. Because I, because I've seen people get seated. I've seen. So I've seen NBA players get seated pairs that I wanted, and then the shoe launch, and them not even load a thirteen. So to me, I was like, that was my 13. The silver toe. just seated my 13. <laughs> I know he wears a 13. You just seated my shoe to this NBA player. Like, I get it. But at the same time, if they're that limited that you can't even load it when when it comes time to sell, that's that's crazy to me. Like, yeah. that's that's messed up. Like, don't do that's that. What I'm saying. They don't care about the uh, – it's just – it's weird now. I mean, we're in a weird space where I don't think brands are really caring about it almost seems like, you know how <clears throat> somebody, like a regular person would go broke almost to look fly on Instagram? It's almost like that with these companies too. It almost seems like they don't give a damn about making money. They just want to look cool and popping on Instagram or social media. It's it's strange. And at the end of the day, I thought this was a business. You're not making money off those celebrities. You're making money off us. And if you're not making enough to make money from us, then what are you doing it for? You know what I'm saying? It's it's strange. I'm telling you, likes and comments are more valuable than money these days. It's wild. Have, I, I advise y'all, if y'all haven't seen that show on um, HBO Max called Fake Famous, please watch it. It will change oh. your whole perspective on social media. <laughs> oh my that. God. So crazy. Wild. Wild. But it makes sense though. You know what I'm saying? I get it, but it's just, I think I was perplexed for a little bit after I watched it. Like, bro, do I live in this world? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Take me to Mars now, bro. We got to start a new colony or something because this ain't it. And it's only going to get worse. It's not going to get any better because social media is not going anywhere. So I'm just, it almost messes with my anxiety just to know where the sneaker game is going to be in five years. Like it's, it's going to be crazy. Uh-huh. Expensive. I know that. I don't know. I feel like, I feel like once, once we, once we get back to you know life as normal and people are able to travel and get out and it's not about you don't have as much time to sit at home what you ain't been to screen. texas <laughs> what we've been no, living life been you know what I'm saying? So, so that's why i'm like is that really gonna be the remedy because boys down I mean, here what pandemic it's not it's not like that up here <laughs> like it's it's pretty locked down but like i mean i i that's the way i feel like for me i'm i don't I think I get most disappointed in, in sneakers these days because I don't have the chance to wear them anywhere. Like for me, that's what it is. Like, I don't, like I have tons of stuff that like I have never posted and that I've never shared, but like, I just, 
I want to wear it. Like, I really want to wear it. And not being able to wear it is probably the most frustrating thing to me. Like, in person, in real life. Like, that, the like, I, I care less. Whatever, you know? I wear it around the house. Uh, I don't care. I'll, yeah, I'll <laughs> do laps in my backyard if I have to. Just to <laughs> You got to get that fit off by any means. You feel me? <laughs> I believe it. We got we got a couple inches of snow out here, so I can't. I oh, can't that's right. <laughs> Oh, I wanted to bring up something uh, Swaver talked about as far as where sneakers are going to be in five years. And y'all had mentioned that, you know, there are a lot of these pages that like all that really matters is the got them, right? Like that's all that matters to some people. You you don't see pages with dudes wearing on feet. You see got them screens. Do I can now, name a few of those. Oh, I don't God. know <laughs> if y'all know what NBA Top Shot is. But apparently it's this like, they're kind of like digital trading cards where people like buy like certain moments of a game. And apparently this one of LeBron dunking on some dude from the Kings sold for $208,000. Like, fam, I pulled it up on YouTube. Like I, what, what's the thing that sold? Like, what is the thing? Is it the and, right to that, to that? visual it's still on youtube <laughs> like i don't really know so and i think russ bankston went on a twitter rant about it where it's basically going to become just people owning rights to digital shoes and like if it's already happening with like nba highlights like how far are we from it and i i just wanted to bring that up to the group to see what you guys thought of it I'm over here like, let me go ahead and look at this stuff, what he's talking about. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's crazy. I, yeah. But it wouldn't it wouldn't shock me at all. Mm -mm. It has to evolve somehow. And technology is going to be in it. It wouldn't, it wouldn't shock me at all. At all. I might be out. I like, see it happening, though. Like, we, like, for example, like StockX, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's uh, StockX, they have it in their little digital portfolio. Or they're like trade block who's there. And you can see what shoes you have. And, and they'll just start trading the shoes and selling them and never wear them. So I, it, it's starting to become that, you know what I mean? Like a lot of people have it because they got it, you know what I'm saying? And it's a trophy to them. And now they'll barter and trade them and never actually ever wear them on their feet. I think we're already starting to get to that point where got it. You got the UNLV dunk? Yes, I do. Sick. You want to trade it? Don't and tell Dave that. <laughs> He needs that shoe, bro. A lot of these, a lot, it's already starting to happen. You know what I mean? Like, I think you're yeah. already starting to get to that point where your people are buying the shoe, they get the shoe, and then they turn around, put it on Instagram, and then they sell the shoe, or they, or, or they're like, locker. look, like, you're go go locker. Go locker. Go locker. locker. Oh, go right. I I I feel like James, like at the end with the goat lockers, with the StockX, with the trading, like. At some point, you have to have a tangible thing, right? Like, I can't, I, I couldn't sit here and trade for the rights to a salmon toe 1.0. Like, at some point, I would actually have to have the shoe, you know? And like, I understand goat lockers really kind of a reseller's like kind of dream because like I know people who buy stuff, put it in goat locker. Price goes up, they sell it, and they didn't ever have to look at the shoe. Like that, I kind of understand, but like, I'm not gonna be like, yo, here's my collection on the goat locker. You know what I mean? Like, just... <laughs> not crazy that sounds, bro. <laughs> but somebody is doing that. You know what I mean? Yep. <laughs> well, they're gonna start selling gottoms. It's crazy, yeah. man. I mean, that's kind of weird, but, but at the same time, maybe because, you know, you have, you have something in a goat locker and how do you know that that's real? Like, how do you know if you never held it in hand, how do you know that it's authentic? How do you even know that it's not damaged or like, you know what I mean? That it's the right size. Like, how do you know that? I don't know. Like that, that bugs me. That bugs me. Like, okay, I bought something. It's sitting in a goat locker. What if I sell it? And then goat tells me that it's not authentic. <laughs> right? Or they say that the person rejected it because they said that it was worn. Right? Like, what am I going to say? I mean, like, 
for people to start buying when they start buying percentages of shoes like yo i own two tenths of a of a air jordan one you know what i'm saying like <laughs> I, I got the laces you know i bought him me and swear went half on the shoe i own the, the tote box and the first three rows of laces, everything else belongs to Swaver. So, you know, like, you know what I mean? Like, isn't, like I, I feel like that's already a thing somewhere too. I think I, I read about it, like where people were buying percentages of shoes to resell. But the, that's, cr- that's crazy. But the shoe rental, right? There's that shoe rental lease place. Oh, Kicks right? World. Yeah. Where you could buy or rent for like a month or something and then send them back. And they'll, you know, and then they'll give you something else. That's but, crazy, like, bro. Listen, <laughs> listen to this. Listen to this. Like, they crazy. had Laura on. She's she's like a marketing director, and she kind of goes into it. Who? About how it works. Um, on the sneak disc, they had uh, oh. Laura, who's Little Aces on Instagram, and that's she... why her picture was on that ad. I was like, why is her picture on this ad? What's this about? Like, I yeah, didn't she's know who it the was. yeah, she's one of the marketing directors for the company, so she'll. Is, She'll is be able to break she, it down. She can explain it all on? she wants. It's not gonna sell me on it. <laughs> no way. Will I rent? A I'm shoe. never renting a shoe. I will never rent a shoe unless it's through a tuxedo. The That's risk it. for me never. is way too high because I've definitely like sold stuff that I wore once, and then the dude's like, "Fam, these are destroyed." And it's like, "Wait, what? Like I wore it one time. What do you mean destroyed?" And I, I just have a feeling that that. That's something that would happen with Kicks World. Like, I would wear it once to an event, send them back, and then they'd be like, oh, well, this is destroyed and you got fined. Like, fam, what? <laughs> yeah, too risky. Getting no to way. that point, though, you know, like, what shoe am I going to get? Like, you have it for, like, let's say you get the shoe, you have it for a week. Like, I got to pick out a fit for this. I got to be ready. You know, I don't work that way. Like, I, I, I get, I look into my sneaker room, I like, take my time, I'm like, yo, I'm going to and I put everything together. Like, imagine having to pre-plan my outfits for the week because that's all I have the shoe for. And then I gotta send it back. Well, you know, what if it rains? You know what I'm saying? Then I gotta take it off. Do I get a refund because I can't wear them in the rain? Like, what's the problem? Or if it's no, that's too much. It's wild. And I, you know what? Just tell me the shoe. I'm gonna just wear it. It's too much. It's that's too much. Crazy. I'm gonna get anxiety just from thinking about that. Oh, that's so ridiculous. Yeah, and plus, you know, like, like James, like, like you were saying, like, I feel like. I can't wear something if it's hot right that moment. I feel like I gotta wear it when it's when it's when it's died down, and like I also gotta wear stuff when it's when I'm in the mood, right? Like I can't I can't just throw on certain things. I can't just throw on something because it's new. Like, and so for me that's a that's a big deal. Like having a shoe here for a week and then I gotta feel rushed into putting together a fit or putting something on. Like that's crazy. Like I, I, I need I need time to digest the shoe to think about. Like Brian, you and I talked about the Salehis and the lace choice for like a few weeks because yeah. you couldn't. You were like, I don't know, like burgundy, like orange, like cream. Yeah. Like what am I doing, right? And then like, what color pants am I going to wear them with, right? It's a whole thing. So like, you can't just be like, all right, I'm gonna get this shoe this week, and then when you get it in hand, you're like. Oh, this isn't it. This isn't what I was envisioning. This isn't sitting on my foot the way that I thought it was gonna sit. Like it's a whole process, and like renting shoes is more about like the clout, like flossing it, making sure that you have it, rather than hey, I got it, and I really enjoy it, and I can't wait to put together an outfit with it, and I have it indefinitely, and I don't have to feel rushed about it. My well, bad. I'll- my fault, B. Go ahead, B. I'm I'm just looking at this Kicks World website. I'm in like, what? <laughs> this is a really a thing? I've never heard of this. Oh God, I have it. And I'm like, what? <laughs> well, it's that it's that levels. You know, you go down to Miami and you can rent the Lamborghini, right? And you rent it for the weekend. This and then true. now I got a guy in New York that I know, part of the jewelry business. He rents Rolexes. And he rents them for a certain amount of time because he knows somebody wants them to either put on Instagram or put on social media, whatever it may be. And he makes music video, or whatever. Right, whatever it is, it's going down to the feet now. It's going down this, to the sneakers. This is somebody crazy. To rent a sneaker. <laughs> Can you imagine that? No, hell That's no. Ridiculous. What was your all your take on this Air Jordan won this trophy room? What do we really think about this show? Come on. And, and we're being honest. And we're we being honest. honest. It, it was all hype that everybody wanted to shoot. Because that was, sneaker, 
garbage. If you give me a choice to take the trophy room or a regular Chicago one, I would take the Chicago Chicago one one. 10 times out of 10. All day. day. But that whole aura about everybody wondering, are these fake? Are he backdoored this? That built to that machine just oiling up and just rolling like a Mack truck. So, of course, you want it. But if we're being honest, that sneaker was just that was uh, funny. Over, uh, it was just okay. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying, and, and that's not hate. People, I you know, I said that on uh, I can't remember what comment page. I'm always ran on some comment section, but it's like I said that people were like, they thought I was the devil reincarnated. You're crazy, you know what I'm saying? But it's like if we're being honest about it, that sneaker was I. Right. You know what I mean? Give me a Chicago one or the Spider Man one. I would take that before the trophy room. If I'm being yeah. honest about it, you know what I'm saying? But like I said, that's the you. The hype, man. Hype is everything. So that trophy yeah, that was, one. That shoe was all right. It was like really if you got it, right. of course you would rock it. Or of course you would stunt and say you got it. You know what I'm saying? But it, 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 it wasn't I worth I got it for retail and it's forty seven hundred dollars now. I'm not. There's no way. Right, there's no way I'm wearing that shoe. Right. I'm not keeping that shoe. None. There's no way. No. I, no way. I don't I like buy that shoe and it doesn't come with the blue laces and you're like what just happened exactly <laughs> and, and everybody's gonna be well even then even if you have the blue laces when you wear that sneaker nine people out of ten are gonna think you have a fake sneaker on for sure way too now, I don't, I don't want to have to be slapping dudes left and right accusing me of having a fake slipper uh, sneaker on you know what I'm saying like no because <laughs> even I if I saw somebody with that sneaker on that I know they're not really in this game for real, for real. I'm gonna be like, oh, that's a fake for sure. Even people who are are like are still going after UAs, like just to to say that they have it because oh. no one's really gonna know the difference anyway. You know what it's I mean? True. Like it, I guess they're like, if they're gonna uh, people gonna accuse me of having a fake anyways, I might as well yeah. rock it. So yeah, and that's I mean, that's a conversation for another day, but fakes are just getting so good that it's it's really just impossible to tell. Rico, I was telling my homie the other day, I'm pretty sure, like, because, you know, I buy a lot off StockX. You know what I'm saying? I've only made in the last few months where I'm like, I'm trying my hardest to stay off StockX. But hype releases, I was that person that fell into that 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 uh cycle of, okay, I missed out on sneakers. Let me go get this joint off StockX. Mm-hmm. I'm convinced I have a fake pair of sneakers somewhere in my collection. No doubt about it. Yeah. Not, no, not, not saying I did it in... Uh, purposely knowing I have it, but I'm pretty sure there's a fake in my collection somewhere. Because StockX, let's be real, they're just regular people. They're not right. taking that shit. Probably. But where where the fake, whatever it is, back to the club, no one will know the difference. Right? Nobody knows the difference. You know what I'm saying? Oof. Nobody. Oof. Plus to say, I mean, you got to think about it. StockX, how many, they probably get tens of thousands of shoes a day. You think that person checking that shoe is really thoroughly looking at every stitch that's on that shoe? No, they probably have a quota they had to meet per hour or something. You know what I'm oh, saying? They do. <laughs> so they really they're probably do. just, oh, the stitches are good, pass. And so there's, and as good as these UAs are starting to look, there's no way that people aren't getting fakes. Impossible. Especially a Jordan 1 or anything that's hype. Oh, you got a fake in the stash somewhere. Somewhere. How, if they don't have one in hand, like to really that, go through it, like, so, they don't have an authentic pair there that, that they can they can, can use to judge these. These shoes were out so early, you know what I'm saying? Like if they do have one, it's probably one of these backdoor pairs that isn't real. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like where is the class that's teaching everybody who's the authority on? Hey, this shoe is coming out. This is these are how you'll know if the shoe is real or how it's not. Like where's that playbook? They don't have that. That's not a thing. It doesn't exist. You know what I'm saying? So when you say it's you know this guy's like, oh, I'm an authenticator. Bet you watch the same YouTube videos. I, you know what I'm saying? Like that dope, bro. Okay, cool. Bro. You know what I mean? Like, you know what I'm like what? Like where is it? Like if you're looking at a diamond, you know, you you can the guy you can check to see if a diamond is real. You're looking at a shoe. This shoe just released two weeks ago. The guys at Stock X don't have a deal with Jordan or Nike, so they don't have that shoe on hand. They didn't study for a week. All right, guys. The trophy rooms are dropping in two weeks. Everybody study tonight. You need to know what's up. We're going to do a test, and we're going to send you the shoe, and if you get it, we're good. Hell no. It's more like. Good to me. Yeah, that's Maybe awesome. uh, this one's fake. Fuck, you know what I'm saying? I've had shoes that I've sent in that I've got my um, Yeezys that I sold on StockX that I got from Foot Action. And they were, they sent me back, and they hit me back with, uh, we, you know, this this 
the shoes I'm authorized. And I'm like, I'm like, here's the receipt, player. Like, where, where, huh? You know what I mean? Like, talk to me. Where, where did this happen? They took out a hundred bucks, and I fought like to the nail, and it was a whole thing. But like, who? I mean, Jordans are are extremely uh, when it comes to UAs, they're extremely invested in that. Half the time. I guarantee you, I mean, more than 50% of the time, those, ha- those there's nobody there to really, really can give you 100. There's nobody that can give you 100% on this shoe is 100%. It's just it's the not there. Factory. It's the same factory. Like, or or is one right no. next door. They're, they're not coming from, it's not like, it's not like it's a halfway around the world. They're looking at a picture trying to figure out if we're producing the right shoe. They're producing extra shoes from the shoes that Nike ordered. So Nike ordered twelve thousand pairs, but they produced twenty four thousand because they're gonna keep twenty. They're gonna keep twelve for themselves to sell and make make additional money off of. Like that's, I mean, I feel like that's that's. I feel like that's what's happening, and there's really no way to like, really, you know, tamp down on that. And like Brian, you and I talked about this too. Yeah. Like that's kind of what kind of keeps me away from Nike and Jordan a little bit, just because I feel like they're the ones being reproduced a lot. And we were talking about whether that would trickle down to New Balance at all. Um, and I feel like it's I feel like it's hard. I feel like it'll be really hard, especially for like the made in the USA pairs, for somebody to really duplicate a made in USA 997 or a 998 or a made in the U- UK shoe. Like those are really hard to reproduce. Like. The material has got to be really on point for that. And like investing in that is just, I don't know, it seems, it seems, it seems really cost prohibitive to try to create some fake, fake new balances. Yeah. I don't, I don't think it's, it's worth it at that point uh, to produce fakes. Like I still don't think, like, I don't think, like I think of a Jordan one, everyone and their mom wants a Jordan one, right. Or Jordan four, everyone and their mom wants a Jordan four, you know, a new balance, nine, nine, two, maybe some people but i don't think it would be worth it for you know a company to be like all right well i'm gonna make a ua version of you know the only shoe i can really think the only two shoes i can really think of that would probably be fake like produced like that they would actually do are like the joe fresh goods and the packer 992 those are the only two like off the top of my head that would probably make money but still i mean you know, ask about a Packard 992 now, like compared to all the people that were hype over it then, or even at Joe Fresh Goods, like they they probably would have to think for a second, like, oh, what shoe is that again? Oh, oh. it's like, fam, you loved it eight months ago when it came out, but now, you know, now you're confused, now you're thinking. But like, you bring up a Jordan 1, you know, you bring up a trophy room, you bring up a neutral gray. It's like, bam, I need it. Of course I need it. Like, whether it's fake or not, like, I don't care. Like, that's, the, I, I don't think the, the the reward would be there for a company to put out a UA of of a New Balance yet. Yeah, I agree with that. Thank God. <laughs> right. the, the day they start making fake New Balances, what the hell? <laughs> it's over. I, I, I might have to retire then. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's over. <laughs> I saw so many pairs of those Jones though over the summer that like I was starting to think that they were. There which was ones? Snakes flowing because there was a lot of people with them, and I'm like, which ones? The Jones, the green ones, the green. Oh ones yeah, yeah, ones. yeah. There was there was too many of those. I was like, there's there's too many of them, but I can't get a pair. I feel like these there's fakes. There's, I feel like there's got to be fakes because everybody I knew had posted a picture of them, and I was like, where they where are they coming from? Because I know they didn't produce that many. Definitely fake. There's a ton of fakes on those coming out. You could tell. I mean, like you said, the materials aren't the same, so they didn't do it. But you can't tell these days. I mean, I, I wouldn't be able to tell a one fake and a one real. I'd look at it like, all right, yeah, it looks great. Thanks. I mean, uh, what am I going to smell it? <laughs> <laughs> hey, yo, take that shoe off. Let me smell that real quick. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> that, was, that was a big tell like before. Yeah, it was. Like fake, you, if it smelled like straight glue, I mean, yeah. fakes have gotten so good. I remember when fakes used to look like cardboard box. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was, you could be like, what the, what is this? This is awful. Jordan be you know throwing a pass behind his back instead of dunking. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> like, blatantly the wrong color. You know, it, it, it 
just to look at somebody's shoes. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, nah, I'm good. Yeah, I got time for all that, bro. Yeah, I could kill. Oh, <laughs> so I'm trying to like think about like what like what what brands are are safe, are gonna be safe from like hype in the future. Like that that is that is always um on the forefront of my mind. Like I think I think sneakerheads, we always we do have this feeling of like we either got to pull out something that no one else is wearing that existed a long time ago, or we got to be ahead of the curve, like, like way ahead of the curve. Like I got to be, I got to be on this way before you guys are on this. Like, and it's not like, Oh, I got this early. It's got to be like, I had that. I like, I'm on, like we were rocking new balances before, before new balance was hot. Right. So like, I'm trying to think what, what are some things that we think is gonna, are going to pop that um, haven't, or that, or that people new to the culture haven't discovered yet? Dave, we're going to go back to like getting those atomic Hakeems. So. <laughs> yes. Maybe, maybe. I love Etonics. That was my brand. I remember, I remember my mother buying me a pair. Um, we were at Marshalls, and they had two pairs of Etonics, and Etonics were hot in my neighborhood when I was growing up. And they had a they had an all navy pair, and I love navy. And then they had an all brown pair, and the all brown pair I hated brown when I was a kid. And the all brown pair was the only one that was in my size, so I had to get them. And like I hated wearing them, but like now, and I think back on them, and I was like, oh, they were like brown suede, all brown suede, and I'm like, man, those were like those are hard. Like I would totally rock those now. You know what I mean? You can't, you can't so, find them anywhere. Can you? Can't, you couldn't, you couldn't throw, you couldn't throw any type of money out and get a pair. So like, I feel I, Etonics could come back. I feel like they could. I feel like they were a thing for a while back when I was young and I feel like they could come back anytime. They did some collabs with them. A few people did actually. It's tough for a new brand to really jump into this because a lot of it falls into either nostalgia or you fall into a certain subculture or a part of this world. So for a new brand to just be like, hey, I'm here, it doesn't have that pedigree or it doesn't, and it doesn't have that, that, that history. So people don't necessarily, won't pay attention to it as much. You'll need it to go away and then maybe come back. For example, BK Nights. When I was growing up in, in, in like the 80s and 90s, BK Nights were hot. You know what I'm saying? I, yeah. I love BK Nights. You know, those went away and they come back now, they're, they're, It'd be interesting. They're cool. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, uh, like that, that would be a hard shoe to get into for a new shoe to jump in. It won't be there. I mean, but unless it falls into a new world, like skate shoes, they have their own world. And unless one of those pops out, remember, think of like Osiris's were cool. Uh, Lakai's were cool. Etnies were cool. DC were cool, but they fell into a certain subculture of sneakers for them to be that way. But they never fell into this world because they couldn't cross that threshold and they in fact got dominated because nike joined that world and took over it you know what i'm saying at least for the shoe head perspective you know so and then the fat sneaker and you know uh so people got away from those and went back to like bands and and uh and uh like skating in in uh chuck taylor's because they were better for that but like that was a movement that was going into you know it had its own wave nike came in with their pedigree these their innovation got involved in that culture and became a part of it and took over. You know what I'm saying? Now you tell that to a skater, they're going to tell me that I'm full of bullshit because that's not their scene. You know what I'm saying? They don't care about SBs, but for the, for anybody to really jump away where you start really hammering home the fact that these are the shoes that I cop, like it's, 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 it's damn near impossible because there's a gazillion brands out there. Just nobody's rocking them. You know what I'm saying? Nobody cares. We've seen we've seen brands like Fila come and go, Reebok come and go, and oh, they have the their Reebok, moments when they come back. The Reebok you know, I, hurts I, my heart, bro. Oh my facts. gosh, the way they went down facts. the fucking drain. Don't the, the, do not, not sleep on Reebok. Do not. Oh, not I don't sleep on Reebok, Reebok but I'm good. saying from a overall standpoint, like Reebok is falling off so hard. And from a kid that grew up in the '90s, with Reebok might have been more popping than Nike when it comes to basketball. They, they you know what I'm saying? Come on, like, <laughs> come on. When, when, when what's in it? Did the pump before the dunk? You feel oh. me? It, I, like these D Browns that are coming out when they come out next weekend, right? They're re, they're retro on the D Brown. The yep. you know yeah, the one. Oh yeah, there, them up. there will be no hype behind those. I guarantee yeah. they will be sitting. 
I, oh, I no. They're no. not going to sit. You don't they're think not. so? If no. they don't, it's because they made them limited. They will sell they're out. Gone. Well, think they're about gone. this. The only reason they're going to sell is because old people like us. I mean, probably. But, you know what I'm saying? But also, I mean, I didn't think those yellow toe questions would fly. Well, I knew those were going to fly because they were the Lakers colors and they were kind know. of associated with Kobe Bryant. I didn't, you know I didn't think the Griffins were going to fly either. Yeah, we, my Griffins are lost. The, the Converse weapons back in the I can't game. believe that. The the Converse weapon, the, 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 the Magic and the Bird pair, those pairs were just unbelievable. Those The Converse weapon pair, the Bird and the Magic Johnson pair were unbelievable. Those were unbelievable. The leather on them was just so good. I mean, is Converse ever going to come back though? Like, is Converse, do you think? I mean, because yeah, they got that hold with Nike. So, you know, they, they're, they're pushing them be around. They're going to always be around with their typical, you know, Chuck Taylor. And Taylor's. they do well with that. Why would you even, you know, mess with it? Now, what are you going to You're going to go back to Alessi, Lacoste Motif, you know, those are pairs, you know, like Lacoste Sportifs. I mean, those have been around forever. Most people don't know that brand, but they put out quality shoes. I mean, the quality pairs out there. See those use those always released in the U.S. I thought that was just a foreign brand. Like those are yeah, I thought it was French. You, you used to be able to get those back in New York. You were able to get those here and there, Lacoste Sportifs, because you, remember New York is that melting pot. Everybody used this to come over. Everybody's from everybody. So all the tourists used to come over. So all those stores, that store, what David Z, that used to be up on Broadway, they had everything in there. Every mm-hmm. shoe in there. Yeah, I just want to break. If you don't have that pedigree, if you don't have that history, like we're talking about brands that are, were already there and they still yeah. haven't broken that threshold again. We've seen them get in there. Fila was there. Remember when Fila was popping with Grant Hill? It had you know what I'm saying. Yeah, uh, yeah Grant Hill, you know, the Jerry spaghetti. Stackhouse. You know what, yeah, I'm, saying? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like those. And, I mean, they came back with those ugly, terrible whatever the girls were wearing like last oh, year. Bro. Like, those you ugly, know uh, heel, heel, platform shoes with the oh please oh, I don't know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying the disruptors, the disruptors were fire and they no no, no, no. I'm gonna let you have that Jay what no sir <laughs> no, no, no. not the not the girl one is oh the, okay the one with the feel on no, the side wasn't the the disruptor. yeah what is that called it's the disruptor the, um, yeah it's the disruptor. Oh, okay. I the, thought we were talking about the platforms when the kids are wearing, like the no, girls wearing no, 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 the, the white the joints. Runner, the I runner. can't remember what that's runner. called. The Feel the Runner shoe. Yeah. They did. They had a collab, because I remember Packer did like a Yeezy one, like a Yeezy they had a few. They run a colorway one. They had a few, uh, though. Mind blowers. That's what they were My, called. Oh, yeah. the, 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 they're, like, they're like, like camel color. The camel yeah. color. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Oh. Mind blow- yeah, because I'm like, I'm looking at the mind blowers. Oh. And those are the joints those the, the, yeah, the chicks no. are wearing. Uh, oh, yeah. bro, I, I just that's gotta a, tip some of them over because the platform that's on me, dude. It's hot in this closet, B. That, that's on me. <laughs> Back in the day, the fila, the, the white fila. The, whatever it is, the white leather with that phyllo on the side. Yeah, the that's the dope boy shoe right there. That, that was. was. Right? <laughs> that was it. Eric B and Rakim <laughs> dropped that album. Everybody with the Supreme Team sitting on that that Benz. That phyllo shoe was. You saw it everywhere. It everywhere. Fun. Everywhere. They still sell out those. You've got, you've got shoes drop. like that. Yeah, you've got shoes like that, right? That, that have been there, they're all, you know what I'm saying, that they're, they're always on that threshold of popping back into, into pop culture, but, you know, you've got shoes like Solomon trying to break into it. They're there, you know what I mean? But to get into, for a new brand, to just, to just even get there is so damn hard. Like, that's, oof. how long has New Balance been around? How long has uh, Sockety been around? You know what I'm saying? How long have these brands been around and and they're still not at the, uh, and th- those are, I mean, think about the, the most popular brands out there when it comes to sneakers. Nike, Adidas. Puma, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Asics. Uh, ain't, I mean, give me ten right off the top, and it's hard. But there's, there's, I get, there's so many more brands than just those ten. For a brand you want to get in to break into even a top five, where they're even worthy of having a conversation. On that sounds super elitist, but I was like that last time around anyway. But for them to break into that realm where they're even willing to be discussed on a podcast without being on a on a without being a collaborative. Uh, um, brand like it's just it's like winning the lottery bro that's, well, there that's are gonna couple, be tough i know a couple brands that are like i guess basically they have weird instagram followings like uh saya collective 
I've never bought a pair of those, but he seems to be selling out every time he drops a shoe. Uh, Mash, he, Drop I mean, his, his, his Centralia, that shit did numbers. You know what I'm saying? I don't know how many he made, but at 300 a pop and they sold out like that, he had to hit a lick. You know what I'm saying? I, I mean, I, I don't know if they're worth it. <laughs> Mosh is also super famous, though, like for for being a customizer. Like he's still really, really true, popular true. in that realm. Um, Saya is is the one, the one brand that I would that I would consider like is on the way up. Is because I've seen I've seen the shoe in hand, and the shoe's terrific in hand. The um, the fuck racism joints, those those are really really great and really well constructed and um. And the box they come in and like all the extras, like, cause that's the thing for me that I really like. It's like, I just got the, um, the foot patrol gel eight three, the squad mm-hmm. and it had like three laces, like extra insoles, like that's extra insoles, I, laces. Yeah. yeah. So the side is doing something really, I mean, you know, say, say what you will about FBCC man, but Sai is doing some really, really exciting stuff as far as sneakers go and new brands. Um, yeah, they're they're really on the way up now. Will they compete with a with a Nike with an Adidas? No, with they don't have the budget no. for that. No, but they're in their own lane. He's doing numbers, and so I think just the more and more he goes, the more and more he pushes. I mean, you know, maybe maybe that's part of a wave. You know, five six years down the line, since it's already grown so much as it is. I feel what like about the sound repair. What is that? The uh, uh, what's his name's pairs? Uh, the one that's coming out of uh, Sonra, Sonra, Sonra. Oh, yeah. so yeah, oh, Sonra, uh, yeah. Uh, the guy from uh, from, from, from you interviewed him. Yeah, Hickman. was he from over? Is he who, who's it? Does he? He's from Soulbox. You or a uh, Soulbox? There he is. Soulbox. Yeah, yeah, Soul yeah. Soul he, he founded Soulbox. Right. Those so shit Hickman, sell out so fast. Yeah. Yeah. Hickman, Hickman is interesting, but Hickman's Hickman's cool. Like we, I. I actually got to interview him a few months ago and like he's 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 like hardcore sneaker person like like Brian how you are like he is he's like that where like he could tell you where he was when certain shoes dropped he could tell you stories about like being in basements looking for stuff in the 80s like he's 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 legit and I think and I think with 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 him I've he wants to be involved in sneakers, but he doesn't want to be tied down. And I feel like that is what he felt with Soulbox for a long time. Like I feel like he's like one of those people that if a cool if a cool ASICs collaboration is is an option, he wants to be able to do it. If a Nike collaboration comes up, he wants to be able to do it. If a Nike pair that he likes comes out, he wants to be able to wear it. Like he doesn't want to have to say like somebody telling him you can't wear that other brand or something like that. Yeah, he's yeah. he's very like, and like I think from from the from the his releases he's like yeah I'm not trying to expand I'm not trying to do I'm not trying to go up to like two thousand pairs every release I just I just want to make something when I'm inspired and that is really cool and that people will appreciate and so he knows that there's people that appreciate what he's making and he's going to make X amount of pairs. Cause it's like, it's all, it's all out of his pocket. Right. I think. And he's not, I know he talked about like, Oh, well, I don't have to go check in with this person or this person. Like, you know, like I don't have to worry about like a team and we're all sitting down and like everyone has a say, it's just, I'm coming up with this shoe and I'm going to make it and produce it. And if I like it, I'm going to produce it. You know, and so I kind of respect that because it's like, you know, like he was, he got, he got a whole bunch of flack for eating shoes out of the, eating ice cream out of the Chunky Dunkies. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he they out that. <laughs> but it, I think for him, he's like, I don't care. Like, I like every shoe. Like, I, you know, I, I just want to really, really love shoes because he really does. Um, and you can just tell, like, when you talk to him that he, could talk about them for hours. And so I kind of respect that. And I kind of respect like him wanting to do like just, you know, small limited runs. <clears throat> like he's not trying to, he's not trying to set the word. He's not trying to catch Nike. He's not trying to, 
you know, he's not trying to catch A6 or anything. He's just trying to create something that he likes. And that's yeah. Yeah, oh, really it's, like it was that. a shoe I really like that Anta SB that Sally Ray did. I, I like that. Oh, shoe. so good. Wow. Those sell out. Those sell out too, man. Hey, yeah, as soon as you get the I email like with the shoe. password, you yeah. go on the website, gone. gone. It's like, what? Gone. <laughs> and they're cheap too. They're like 100 bucks. Hey, I was not on so StockX. Oh, they bro. ain't cheap on StockX. StockX. Nope. <laughs> they got some good colors. It's they crazy, do. bro. But, look, <laughs> but that's what that's what I mean. Like, like there's 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 shoes out there. It's just great. Like, and this is what I like pissed me off about New Balance because New, I, I felt like New Balance has been sitting at number three for a, for a bit now, right? And it worked its way to number three behind Adidas. And I felt like Adidas have been faltering for like six years. I'm they're like, four. No, they're four. Who who's who's Nike, Jordan, Adidas. Oh, you know, you start putting George JB yeah. and Nike together. That's the same <laughs> damn thing. Lie, you know what I'm saying? Like, but, but you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I felt like New Balance, that was its moment. Like, go, like, attack. Go in. If, if you were going to do it, if you were going to take over a secondary, a, a, a new market, do it now because Adidas was failing and failing and failing and failing. And I mean, even though they're still doing numbers overseas and they're still releasing all their same old junk, like, this was the moment for a brand to, to, to jump in there. Adidas took advantage of Nike in uh, the early or the mid 2010s mm. for like a year or two before Nike got his shit together. And Adidas has been falling and falling and falling. Nobody wants to like jump on the attack. I don't know if it's economics or what the problem is, but New Balance I felt was the one ready to make that move. Like it had enough silhouettes. It had enough of, a, of a, it has enough of a following. It has that clout with, when it comes to um, collaborations and influencers or whatever. But instead of, they just didn't, they're not doing it. Like they don't have, the dick. I feel like they don't have the production. They don't have a production to keep up with Adidas, you know. Like, I think if you're not making the majority of your shoes in Asia, like, you just you can't you can't you can't compete. And I think, and I think that's where that's why they've started to start, you know, making like a lot of stuff like the 327 and like the X90, and they brought back the 2002 R's. Like those are all made in Asia shoes, right? So they can they can produce. Like, yes, do you think? Do you think all made in America, uh, all made in USA's or made in Flimby's? Do you think they're all really made there? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I. Mm-hmm. They are. Hmm. I mean, so so the production. I'm, nat- numbers, I'm a naturally skeptical person. I'm like, there's no way these are all made. So here. so the production USA. numbers. I the production numbers like. Uh, so we have we have this dude Richie who's in our chat like Rico knows and like he's he he gave us the numbers like and they were only doing like like for a GR nine nine seven before twenty nineteen they were making a thousand pairs. That's crazy. So like like there's there's more there are more rosés concepts nine nine seven rosés. Then there are like I'm trying to think like like GR like the the Route 66 998. Like there's more of those. Like there's more concepts rosés because the numbers that they do are so small for the made in USA pairs. Like I think now it's ramped up. Like uh, like that Todd Snyder pair. Like they made. The 992s, the Todd Snyder 992s, they made 600 pairs of them. The 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 endless 997 from from Todd Snyder, they did a hundred of each color. Like they aren't making, like Adidas is making 30,000 pairs at a clip. Like nobody's making that. The the most that they've made, I think, has been when they've done the collaborations with Bodega. So the No Bad Days. Um, I'm trying to think what this is. And even then, you could tell those are like a little bit like the quality of them wasn't as good as like a they're made in Asia. They're all made in Asia. So like, but they made they made sixty thousand pairs, right? They made sixty thousand pairs and then they made thirty uh they they started off with like thirty thousand pairs, then they went up to sixty, and I think the last one they made a hundred thousand pairs. And so that was a big deal for them, right? Like to go from like a thousand pairs to like a hundred thousand pairs that's a huge that's a huge jump in just numbers and like i'm probably off like a little bit but they're they're just nowhere near and that i think that's the problem with a lot of these smaller brands is like they're just not able to make or they're not producing to the level that an adidas or a nike is 
Nike's making a million pairs. <laughs> like we're gonna get a million pairs of these Jordan 11s, the holiday 11s, right? And they're still gonna sell out instantly. And they're gonna sell out. And you're not gonna be able to get them for less than $200. That's what's gonna happen. And then like New Balance is gonna make a thousand of something and and like it's gonna be like 250 on resale, you know, after a week. I don't know. I think like I think there's I think Nike, Jordan, and Adidas are so far ahead of like right whoever's now. whoever's coming next. Like yeah. you have to you be can't so, catch them. You have to be ranking like like you have to make so many crazy numbers, you know what I mean? And that's Maybe crazy for- to me because Nike. I remember Nike back in the early 80s before Jordan. And they were on the dip. And they were on the dip hard where yeah. they, nobody, nobody was running with Nikes back then. When Jordan first came on that 85 scene, that's when it started. He was the one before. See, I was, I was going to ask you that, B. I, I was like, since you know back in the 80s, what really turned it to where you so saw I, the whole switch up to where people were like, we need Nike. Nike, so Nike. I worked. So I worked in a sneaker store back in New York, back in Brooklyn on Kings Highway. Uh, Rika would know where that area is, and it was a mom and pop store. And the Nike shoes weren't selling. I mean, they were sitting. When that first Jordan came, and I remember when that Jordan came, the Dunks came, and then the Jordans. Right around that time, that wave, they went. It, listen, that whole basketball scene, Sonny Vaccaro, all those guys. Mm-hmm. They really pushed Nike. If they did not push Nike, Nike wouldn't be a brand that you would be talking at number one right now. They what, just Jordan was going to sign with Adidas, I believe, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he was he, he was fielding offers from all over, but Nike really wasn't putting out shoes. They were only putting out the basic, the waffle run. It's like, it was just basic shoes. Until that basketball scene came, they were done. They, they were on their last breath. I mean, they were a brand. New ba- I remember New Balance selling more than Nikes back then. I remember the 999s, the, the 15, the 17, whatever they were, they were selling more at that time than Nike was. Adidas superstars were unbelievable because of run. Mm-hmm. I mean, that was a huge thing. That fat toe laces, I mean, the shell toes with the fat laces, that... Nike, nobody was rocking. Nobody was messing with Nike. As soon as that Jordan came in, they took off. They haven't stopped since. And, and, and it's all due to Jordan. I mean, I, I don't care what anybody else says. I don't care what they put out there. If Jordan didn't exist, if Jordan didn't come along and help Nike out, Nike wouldn't be the brand that you're talking about. They owe everything they have to Jordan. Everything else comes secondary. Jordan, he's the man. He's the one who changed the game. And I mean, I'm, I'm talking about, I remember the commercial, the band commercial, when he, when the black and red pair came out. I was, I had my pair first in New York, that, that Chicago pair, I was one of the first people in New York City to have that pair. I showed up to high school my freshman year, first day with the Chicago pair. Nobody else had them. I had gotten them through Nike. We knew the Nike Connect, so he had hooked me up with them. When that commercial came out, it was like social media. It Everybody blew. had a one. <laughs> I mean, that black and red pair was unbelievable. Damn, it I need a time machine, game. bro. See, that's the type of stuff I want to experience. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm over here like a kid in the candy store listening. My, my hands are clapped, so that means I'm into the story and shit. Like, oh, <laughs> my God. <laughs> it was such a different world. I mean, the game was so different back then. You you know, you that I remember that black and red sneaker like it was just – I remember wearing – I remember what I wore on my first day to high school. I remember yeah. wearing a pair of jeans, a floral shirt, and the red, white, the Chicago pair. I remember the first day <laughs> lacing those things up. I remember looking at them going, I remember the box. I can still see it in my mind, looking at that box and opening it up and saying, this has changed everything for me. That's crazy, man. That's yeah. wild. Yeah. See, that's the type of shit I live for, like that. You yeah. know what I mean? $65, bro. Yeah, crazy. It was six, $64.99, and I got them because I worked in the store, and it was a, listen, it was a mom and pop store. The owner was a guy who went to Brooklyn College Law School. His name, um, Mike, uh, God, he, a Jewish kid. He owned it, never showed up. He was, a, he was kind of a lawyer. It was me, 
my older one of my older brothers and my younger brother and a guy who looked like Burt Reynolds worked there. <laughs> <laughs> Swear to God, he he, he actually bought that. He, he was a bouncer in Captain Quarters on in Marine Park for a while, yeah. but we used to run the store. He used to date the Burt Reynolds guys. Used to date Andrew Dice Clay's sister who ran St- uh, Kaplan SAT. So he used to disappear. So he left three kids in a store to run it and order whatever you wanted. He said, do whatever you want. I don't care. And they used to give us, it wasn't even layaway. You would just order pairs and they would show up and he'd go, oh, who's those for? And he'd be like, oh, they're for me. And he'd be like, I'll just put them on the list. And then he would never go to the list. The owner would be like, eh, just forget about them. Don't worry about it. So I remember my goal back then was to get a pair for each day for every, so I had to get 365 sneakers for every day, different pairs. And remember now I'm in high school, I'm playing ball. I used to tell my boys come in, no, just come on in. I'll give, I'll give them to them for wholesale. So I used to have dudes, <laughs> hey, what's up? Hey, yeah, no problem, whatever. And the, it was stock. You would just go through that Nike catalog. And hey, B, just... was that the beginning of the back door? Did you start it? <laughs> it was it. Did you start it, me? <laughs> Listen, hey, I remember you know, going to. I remember going to Packers, <laughs> Mike Packers' original store back then, and, was, and and he was always loyal to his to the people that used to come in there. But you used to go. I used to go to Frank's up in up by the uh, up up by the Yankee Stadium up there. That dude was another dude. He used to throw you things. Whatever you need, but there was no back. It was not like back door, and it was like whatever you wanted. I used to go through. I used to have friends come into the store. I'll I'll, have, I'll bring it back to the days. If you remember wrestling, Bob Backlund, he used to come in, and I used to make him do the step test in the store. I used to put out a step stool and go do the step test. Dice Clay used to come in there because the guy used to date the sister, so he'd come in there. We'd chop it up. Then I would have you know like. Uh, Jonathan Davis, who was, who's now known as Q-Tip and whatever other name, he'd come in. God, I, we'd have just open the books, just circle what you guys like. Let's order these pairs, and it would be like the Kentucky colors. With, and I, my high school was James Madison, so it was black and gold. So those dunks, I must have had ten pairs of the dunks. I got the whole, we got the whole team. Let's order the pairs right from here. We will get them for wholesale. Who cares? Every pair you had unlimited. It was just unlimited. And Nike, so gonna, and Nike would just make them because yeah. the fact that Nike was like, "All right, we we're trying to we're trying to sell every pair that we could get rid of. Every pair yep. that we could get rid of, we'll make it because we want to sell it." Right? It's a totally yep. different. It's a totally different thing now. Going back to James with Supreme, I remember Supreme with the screen door. I remember. When you used to be able to go into like the sneaker drop, when Supreme used to do that sneaker drop, a week and a half, two weeks later, you'd walk in, you'd see the same kids. There's a kid who used to be in there who's a fireman now in New York City. He used to ride for the team. He'd always be at the front. He'd be like, hey, what's up, bro? I want, hey, you got a pair of those? Yeah, throw them in the back. Hey, no problem. They throw them right in the back. And it was normal to go into a place. I remember when the three... The black cement threes came out. My favorite shoe of all time. Black cement threes, hands down, was it. I mean, I looked at that shoe. With, the, said, with the Jumpman logo or the Nike Air on the back? Nike Air on the back. With the, original, have it. the OG pair. <laughs> I remember you used to be able to go in months and months later and get pairs. Like months. And they'd be on sale. Or, you know, I used to go down to, to the junction, get pairs down in the junction. Just whatever you needed. It was, it was unlimited. Can't even imagine that now. No, yeah. you can't. These days, you, you get your heart broken. You try to get a pair of shoes. Like, I tried to get this, this, this Soleil. He sponged or whatever the pair that he wanted. I just wanted a pair of them. They were 90 bucks. I was like, oh, I'll get a pair of them. It sent to me a password. I opened it up. Sold out. Go on. I was like, does this women, does this woman's pair fit me? No. <laughs> <laughs> You guys couldn't have been on the last pod because we got into the 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 New Balance drop the fucking uh, Tom Snyder joint. Oh yeah, you guys would have felt that. Don't even get me oh. started on that, bro. Don't even. Don't I even. got that. We got that email. We all see, got it. See, <laughs> see, see what I'm saying? Sorry, sorry that it went so horribly. Maybe next time. You know what I'm saying? I, 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 I didn't feel bad about it. 
I didn't feel bad about it when they sent the email saying that he messed up. I was like, all right, I get it. I get it. I was appreciative. I was appreciative because I knew that he didn't expect it. And I knew that. Like, There's no way he didn't expect that, bro. No way. Come on, man. You think Todd Snyder is that oblivious? Yeah. He knew what the fuck he's doing. I, I do. I do. Because because his last collabs sat. His last there's no, there's, no, there's no way. There's no way he's not that it like has his ear to the streets and doesn't know nine nine two is on. I think I think right it now. popped. I think it popped and he said he knew, but I think the time from when he released that because the first image dropped Saturday. And then Monday, yeah, it was like she I don't like, know, man. You you can't convince me he didn't tell Soul Links, hey bro, here go the link. Go ahead and post that. You know every, day, every day I get an email from Todd Snyder. Every day one comes, I'm like, oh, is it? He's going to hook me I up. I keep thinking it's a restock. You know what I'm saying? Or he's going to hook me up with something because he sent me the email that said, hey, I'm sorry, but I'll take Todd Snyder, a champion, new email. colors. I think <laughs> something's coming. Out. Right, all right. Listen, boys, I got to go, man. My daughter's looking for me. All right. All right, right bro. Boys. Take it easy, man. Later, guys. Thanks, Brian. Later, bro. I, I'm okay. I. It doesn't bother me. Like, I was... I. I, I think maybe down the line we might get something, and if we do, then I don't want to hear it. <laughs> but like, I feel like Todd Snyder's not that dude. Like, I feel like he's not gonna let his brand go out like that. Like, he's not. He's not. He's not Ronnie. He's not Ronnie. Where he's gonna be like, oh, uh, oh well. Like, I don't care. I hope like, you know what you're talking about. Cause I need him to make up for that. Cause I was pissed, bro. What? You give me the early link, and then when I click on it, it's already gone. <laughs> What the hell is that? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that was that was that was hurting. I was I was I was like a little I was a little upset because I was like, oh Lord, he hooked me up. Like like they saw that I bought the last two. Like, okay. And then like I clicked on it, it was like page not found. I'm like, word, word. Nah, I, I don't know. I, I feel I feel like I've never seen an apology email. I've never seen that. And I like, I don't know, I felt like I felt like that. I feel like that was a big step to me. It's a different level of customer service that like you just don't see. Like nobody says that to you, right? Yeah. I've sneakers, never seen, speaking of customer service, like customer service in the sneaker game is lacking so much. I think a lot of boutiques and big companies know that, hey, somebody's going to buy this sneaker. So I don't have to be polite to you at all. You know what I'm nope. saying? Exactly. I, being coming from working at a grocery store chain growing up, customer service is everything to me. Okay. That, that, that it sucks now. You know what I'm saying? Everything. It's everything. I've worked. I've worked retail. I worked. I worked retail. I did. I did American Eagle, Aeropost style, Gap, like J Crew. I've worked them all, and like, I've been in. I've been in stores, and like, I've seen where they. Like, I remember. I remember being working retail and watching, and 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 seeing Abercrombie come in, and like the dynamic just change. Where like it was, it went from like, oh, as soon as that person comes through the door, we're gonna try to sell them, sell them everything, and help them out and make them feel special. To we don't care about you, and we're gonna turn up the music real loud. And when you come in, we're gonna act like we don't care. And that, and I remember the first Abercrombie that came in to the mall that I was working at, and I remember it being like man, people are going in there like crazy and they treat their employees, they treat their customers like crap. Like the music is all loud. They don't say- Are you smell this cologne? Yep. <laughs> it was crazy. And like, I feel like it, ever since then, it's been like the opposite where it's like, like I went to Kip in New York and it was the same thing where it was like employees holding a conversation over in the other section they don't even come up and ask you like do you need something or how how can i help you how you doing today blah 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 nothing and then like you know you got to ask them all kinds of questions you got to like hey hey you got anything in the back no i don't have anything in the back like it's crazy yo it's like it's just it's nuts it's nuts that there's no customer service there's no customer appreciation but i like that about todd snyder because you'll get emails like if you buy something and like it'll be a person and they'll be like how did you like this this sweatshirt that you bought does it fit well hey give me a call if you ever want to talk about like other recommendations like nobody does that like who does that nobody you know what i mean i think it's a, just a totally different level i got treated okay at kiff uh -huh. 
I've never I've never been to kids. All, all I keep getting is L's from them. So I went uh when I went when I auditioned for grad school like two, three years ago, I went and they were fine. They were cool. I I mean I also don't I don't really expect that anymore. You know what I mean? Like I go into somewhere like Manor, it's like they know me. Like I know I'm gonna get good customer service, but like if if I just pop into like an undefeated or you know, like a kith or concept, like I'm I'm just there to look, you know. It's they're they're tourist locations at this point. You know what I mean? Like you're yeah. in New York, you're gonna go to Kith, you're gonna go to uh extra butter. Extra butter is really where you should go because the customer service there is actually really good. Um yeah, they're cool. They're really cool there. Yeah. Uh you're gonna go to concepts, you you're gonna do whatever, you know what I mean? So I don't know. They're just they're just tourist locations and I'm I'm cool with that. I don't I generally don't have a problem with it. Going from New York, like I, I understand a little hey, bit. He's, he's he's used to that bad uh bad uh <laughs> attitude shit. You know, you know it's not <laughs> it's not so much bad attitude. What was the tweet I saw? It was like people from the East Coast are are kind but not nice. If people on the West Coast are nice but not kind. It's kind of like that, you know, like yeah. we're not I'm not like I'm not cruel like just for the fucking sake of it. You know what I mean? Like I I just time is money, like especially when you're in New York. Like everything is so cutthroat there. And I don't really know how much it's changed. I haven't lived there in about a decade. But when I was living there, it's like fam, I have to get to work. Why isn't the fucking train running? Like am I gonna be able to drive into the city? Fuck, there's fucking traffic. Like we're, we're all trying to get to places on time. We're all trying to do things and I don't know I don't know how that lends to to the customer service aspect but I I didn't think Keith was all that bad when I went. Yeah. I don't know. I like customer service. They're from Texas. You know what I'm saying? Hey, I'm from Texas. Texas. He, he, hey, yeah. he wants to talk. He wants to you chat. Feel me? Saying, hey, hey, you need that's, you need Southern to, hospitality is yeah, Southern yeah, hospitality like, is a thing down here. And if I don't get yeah. it, it's all some fuck you shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's like yeah. <laughs> I need that. You feel you me? You don't ask him about how his family's doing for yes. at least 10 minutes before you get to business. I'm leaving. Thanks. I need to feel like like we're we're homies. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I'm not from and I'm not from the South. I'm I'm just I just had that sort of pedigree where like I just want to be treated like I just want like you gotta earn this sale. Like if I come in, you gotta earn this. Like and because I think about it like this, like yes, I get it, like Kith has stuff that's going to be Kith stuff is going to sell, right? Kith stuff Regardless. is going to sell. But if I go in there and there's stuff on shelves, that means it's on shelf for a reason. That means somebody doesn't want it. So you got to be on your A game to sell it to me. And I need that. Like I want that, right? I I feel like the funny thing that I always hear from like people is like, "Oh, I'm about creating special product. I'm about creating like I want you to have this cool thing that nobody else has. I want you to feel special. I want this special. All right. Well, I come. I came in the store. I need everything special. That means your people need to be special. Your people need to be treating me special. Somebody needs to come over. Hey, you want a glass of water? Like, you know what I mean? Like, especially now with brick and mortar kind of not being the popping thing. Like, for real. You know what I'm saying? Because my my wife, like, you know, like when she went and bought a wedding dress, like. It's an experience when you go buy a wedding dress. They're like, you got mimosas. They got little, you know. I don't know. You come to politics in Dallas, you'll get some drink in you. You know what I'm saying? I bet. I bet. Uh, bet. Going. Yo, I done went down there and forgot I went for shoes. I'm like, yo, why am I I drunk? You know what I'm saying? See, that's kind of that's kind of why they blown up in Dallas. Like they came in, in Dallas and took the fuck over. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And they got two locations, right? They got Austin. They got Austin. Austin's Dallas. not as big as Dallas, but the one in Dallas, they're definitely running the shit here. Oh, no ifs ands or buts about it. You know what I'm saying? It actually, you, y'all heard of Center, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Yeah, like it's actually helped, kind of made them bring their A game up a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah. I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure they failed it because, <laughs> like we said. You come into politics, they all coming up to you. What up, bro? I've seen them like greet people. I know they don't know. And it's like, damn, they make you feel kind of welcome. So of course I'm gonna come spend my money here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That shit is that shit is needed. Even if you know the the sneakers are gonna sell regardless, we still need that personal aspect. Because like you said, 
you gotta you gotta earn the sale, bro. I'm not just coming in here just to buy this random t shirt. Yeah, you gotta you gotta you gotta make me want to buy that. You know what I'm saying? Because the stuff that's gonna sell is gonna sell. I don't like, buy the stuff right. that's gonna sell right. out is it's sold out already. Right. Facts. Hey yo, but check this out. My wife is looking at me like it's time to eat dinner, bro. So uh <laughs> yo, yeah, happy wife, happy life. You feel me? So I'm about to dip I'm out, y'all. Peace. All right, man. Y'all be easy, be safe. You too. Yeah, Rico, man. my guy. Hey, yes, nice sir. to meet you, bro. Yes, sir. You too, man. Thank All you. All right, man. Y'all be easy. All right, then boys. That was a good one. I enjoyed that. Yeah. Brian, man, taking it back. Oh my god. Ugh. His stories, his stories made my day. I don't like that's that's unbelievable For stuff. Real. I sat in a parking lot. So I bought some shoes from him. I bought it for uh, Richard Rawlings, the star of the show that I was producing. And I needed a pair of off-white UNCs and he had his size. And that's how I met Brian. And we sat in the parking lot and I'm supposed to be producing the show. We probably talked for three hours about sneakers. Just generation. I literally was like, go ahead. Because he's got that thick ass accent too. So it's a lot oh, yeah. of fun to listen. And he gets really animated. It was great. I love Brian. He's a great guy. Yeah, Brian, Brian is real cool people. Yeah. I never met him. I didn't even know. Is is he is he in the chat on the Run the World chat or like? No, no, he's no, low key. So. He's on Instagram, but he's low key. He doesn't post anything. Oh really? Yeah. He what? posts about his wife and like his kids. That's it. That's it. He's the, he's mad cool though. Super mad rad cool. dude. Yeah, he's all about New Balances, but he knows all the shoes, man. He's oh yeah. He's like super OG. Facts. Yeah. All right, boys. All right, get out of here. I'll all see right, you guys later. Here. All right, Rico. All right, Dave. Have a good one, man. You too. Thank Dude. you.